head coach Rick Neuheisel been preaching to his team in these two weeks? Well, Rick came out and challenged his team. He said, listen, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to sit down and feel sorry for, our, for ourselves because we lost to Kansas? No, what we need to do is come out and regain our confidence level. Offensively and defensively, we need to play with more confidence and regain the thing that we had early in the year. Let's talk about that CU offense, particularly the quarterback situation. We know now that Coy Detmer is out for the rest of the season. The job now belongs to John Hessler for good. Well, John Hessler had a great week of practice. He's throwing with a lot of confidence. He's not looking over his shoulder anymore. He has the ability to go out, play the game, not worry about Coy coming in in the third quarter or the fourth quarter. He can go play an entire game and get going. When you talk about Iowa State, Jeff, you talk about one man. His name is Troy Davis. He leads the nation in rushing. If you stop Davis, you stop Iowa State. Troy Davis is their thoroughbred. They are eighth in the country in rushing and 95th in the country in passing offense. So you know that he is their team right now. They need to come out and stop Troy Davis. He's their workhorse. Matt Russell, the CU linebacker, says, yes, he is the offense. You have got to stop Troy Davis. That's what they will concentrate on today as you look at linebacker Matt Russell. All right, it's CU and Iowa State, and we'll come right back for the kickoff. Today's game is brought to you by Pizza Hut, by Coors Light, by Dodge, by First Bank, and by Samsonite. Call Pizza Hut now during this new sport program and you'll receive this great pizza deal. Single topping large pepperoni stuffed crust pizza and two liters of Pepsi, just $11.99. To get this new sport special offer, you must call now. Here he is, late again. Hi gang, sorry I'm late. Had to get money at the bank clear across town. Why don't you bank at First Bank? Then you can stop at any First Bank to get money. They have locations all over the place. Yeah, I went to First Bank and got free checking for a full year. I got my loan there with no problem. Really? Sounds like I need to go to First Bank. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> First Bank, I'm a bank for you. Equal housing lenders. Can a car that pushes the envelope of design and technology hold the line when it comes to price? Consider the innovative Dodge Stratus. There's an advanced multi-valve engine, dual airbags, air conditioning, cassette stereo. In fact, more standard features than Ford Contour, Nissan Altima, and Honda Accord. More passenger room, too. And Stratus offers one more innovation, better value, and a price starting at just $14,995. Dodge Stratus. It's full of answers. Silver bullet, it shipped coal to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Bender, Bender, no problem. Just call the uh oh, better get Mako guy. Get our great Mako presidential finish plus four hours of body labor. Get it done fast and right. Now only $349. That's Mako value. Mako, America's smart choice. Les Shapiro and Jeff Campbell with you at Cyclone Stadium in Ames, Iowa. And you're looking at Jack Trice Field. Artificial turf, capacity, 50,000 still filling up. All the weather today, typical Iowa day for October. Got a good wind, good brisk wind. A little chilly, 40 degrees. Humidity, 62%, and that wind is coming out of the northwest at 15 to 20 miles an hour, going from our left to our right. The series record between these two teams, CU leads it and leads it handily. 37 wins in 49 total games, and that includes the Buffs with a 19-6 and six record. Here in Ames, the Buffs have won the last 11 games between these two schools. Well, as usual, Mark McIntosh will be with us all game long from the field. And let's go down to the field right now and see what Mac has for us. Mark? Thank you very much, guys. You were talking about the wind earlier, Les. Could definitely play a factor. 15 to 20 miles an hour out of the northwest. But at times, it is gusty. Right now, it's probably up to 25, 30 miles an hour. 
So when you see either team moving from right to left on your television screen, it is going to be difficult to throw the football, especially long patterns. See, you have a lot of speed of wide receivers. It'll be difficult for John Hessel to go deep to these guys because he'll be throwing into a very stiff breeze. Last night, Coach Rick Neuheisel said, we don't care about the wind. That will not alter what we do. But look for the bus when they're moving right to left to probably throw more short patterns and then let those wide receivers run with the football because the wind is very brisk down here. You guys have talked about Troy Davis. Matt Russell, the often quoted linebacker for the CU Buffs, compared Troy Davis to Eric Metcalf, the great running back for the Atlanta Falcons. And he went on to say that the nation's leading rusher this year, Troy Davis, is possibly better than Leland McElroy, the great running back from Texas A&M. Very similar, but Russell said Davis might have more moves than McElroy has. Now, you'll probably see the Buffs today employ a defense similar to what they did against Texas A&M. Eight or nine guys up on the line of scrimmage to take away the cutback lanes from Troy Davis so he can't get loose and get into the secondary where he is very dangerous. The Buffs saw that last year when he returned to kickoff 99 yards for a touchdown. Back up to you guys. You know, Les, another thing that's going to really affect is the punting situation for both teams. If you're kicking into the wind, you're going to see a lot of fair catches. You may see a lot of balls hit the ground and drop. And if you're kicking the other way with the wind, you're going to see some return yards. You may see some balls even fly over the punt returner's head. You know, Jeff, when you're a favorite in a game and a heavy favorite like CU is today, you worry about the weather conditions because it, it levels the playing field, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And especially if you throw the ball as much as CU throws the ball. Now, CU does have three very, very impressive running backs, but you need to be able to throw the ball as well as run it to win. Iowa State, obviously known as a running team with Troy Davis back there. They do not pass the ball very well, so this will work to their advantage if both teams have to keep the ball on the ground. Last week, as we mentioned, CU has a bye. Iowa State lost to Kansas 34-7. to Troy Davis was held to 120 yards rushing. The CU offense, you have John Hessler at quarterback, and he knows he's the man for the rest of the year. Herschel Troutman will get the start at running back, although we should see a lot of Lendon Henry today. Rick Neuheisel says Henry has been playing very well and has earned the opportunity to play more. Matt Lepsis is the tight end, and your speedy wide receivers are Carruth, James Kidd, and Phil Zavoy. The offensive line healthy once again. Stoltenberg, Naoli, and Thomas have missed some practice time the last couple of weeks, but they're close to 100%, if not that. And starting at left tackle today is Kyle Smith, in for the usual starter, Clint Moore, who is having some personal problems. We'll talk about that a little later in the telecast. The CU defense looks like this. On the line, you've got Greg Jones, Ryan Olson, Kerry Hicks, and Daryl Price. The linebackers are Mike Phillips, Matt Russell, who we've spoken about often, and Ron Murkerson. And the defensive backs are Kenny Wilkins, Donnell Liamidi, Steve Rosga, and T.J. Cunningham. The Iowa State offense you'll see out there as they get ready to take the field. Todd Doxson is the quarterback. Not much of a thrower, but he is very dangerous when he takes off with the ball himself. The men lining up with him on offense for ISU. At running back, we've got Troy Davis, who we've talked about. Rodney Guggenheim is the fullback, mainly a blocking back. The tight end is Viviasi. And the wide receivers are Ed Williams and Horacek. The offensive line is led by the big 330-pound center, Patrick Agafa from Anchorage, Alaska. And when Iowa State is on defense, they'll look like this. Not a very big one. Jason Putz, Greg Schoen, Sheldon Napaschik. The linebackers are Provenza, Sanders, Cooper, and Ruffalo. The DBs are Anderson, Moore, Strait, and Hudson. CU will be kicking off, and that's Jason Leslie. He'll be kicking with the wind. He has a strong leg as it is. Let's see how far he can put this ball right now. The kickoff returners for Iowa State are Jahi Arnold, a dangerous one, and Kevin Wilson, a freshman out of Ohio. And you can see the wind is already making an impact on this game, blowing the ball off the tee before we even get going. As hard as Jason Leslie kicks this ball, this thing may end up in the parking lot. <laughs> They're putting out a warning in Kansas City. And in order to uh, avoid that problem once again, 
CU's Jeff Nabholt will put his finger on that ball and keep it steady. CU comes in with a record of five and one. They're one and one in conference. Iowa State on the year two and four, zero oh and two in the Big Eight. This is Arnold from his own six-yard six line. line. Has room on the sideline. Finally pushed out of bounds at the 29 by Maurice Sanrique. So Iowa State will come out with it at its own 29-yard line. They are huddled on the sideline calling a play before they head out onto the field. Now here they come. Those bright red jerseys with the white lettering. This is going to be a big series for CU. It's going to be a lot of emotion. They should be playing with a lot of emotion on their shirts. On the plane coming over here, they had emotion written on their shirts. So you know that they're fired up to play this game. Doxson wants to throw. Has Davis in the left flat. And Davis falls down at the line of scrimmage. Making the tackle, defensive end Greg Jones. Well, the CU defense has been uh, pretty staunch in the first quarter throughout the year. The Buffs have not allowed a first quarter touchdown from the defense. A couple of teams have scored touchdowns in the first quarter against CU, but that was on a blocked punt and a fumble recovered in the end zone. The defense has not allowed a touchdown in the opening quarter. On second and 10, flags fly. This is Davis following his blocking pretty well, and he picks up six yards on the play. Davis is a type running back. He's short. He's only 5'8". He's the kind of guy that can hide in there behind, behind those offensive linemen and get, get through the holes of the linebackers are the first guys to really see him. He's just a sophomore. He's out of Miami, Florida. Let's see what the flag is all about. Looks like it's, it's against CU. You're going to see Troy. You know, he'll get in there behind those offensive linemen. See, you can't see him. And then he pops out into the hole. That's why he's going to be really good as a running back because he's really tough to see. I mean, plus all the other things that he brings to your team. He can run forever. They have the, the, the yard-o-meter up on the... Uh, on the defense. Repeat second down. That's referee Hal Dowden. CU has been heavily penalized this year. 60 times they've been flagged coming into this game. That's almost twice as many times as the opposition. Brings up second and five for Iowa State. Problem with the snap and the quarterback, Doxson, has nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, so he goes down for a loss of about a yard. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you, Leslie. I think we've seen already in the first few plays of this ballgame three slips. This turf is very old here at Cyclone Stadium. In fact, it's going to be replaced after this season, but the Cyclones are not putting in a new artificial turf like several other schools in the Big 8. Iowa State will go to a regular grass surface next year. Back up to you guys. Yeah, that seems to be the trend all around the country on the college and the pro level. Everybody going back to the real stuff. Thank goodness, huh? Yeah, anything, anytime you can get on grass, it's like a blessing for any kind of football player. Third and eight, Doxson throwing almost picked off by T.J. Cunningham. Big plays. That's exactly what CU needs to do today. They need to make big plays offensively and defensively. T.J. Cunningham, you'll see they're going to go with a little short route. See Doxson dropping back, a little five-step drop. Gets flushed out of the pocket a little bit. Good pressure up front by CU. He's going to get rid of it. And what makes this play great is T.J. Cunningham steps up and blocks it. Doesn't get interference call with the, with the uh, receiver. Back to punt for Iowa State is Mark Harris, averaging about 41 yards a kick. And Steve Rosgo will field the low punt. That's a fumble. Iowa State... Pushes the ball into the end zone, but CU falls on it. And that will be a touchback. Boy, CU catches a break there, don't they? I'll tell you, yeah, that's, that's a big-time break. You know, Rosga probably just should have let that ball drop. Now, you might be questioning here whether or not this is a touchback or a safety. The line judge called it a touchback, and that's what they'll go with. So CU will get the ball at its own 20. They're calling it a muff. Touchback. 
special teams are going to play a huge part in today's game because of the wind. You know, the punter, the punter uh, kicked a low line drive punt to keep it out of the wind. You see the ball drop. Probably lost it in the sun a little bit there. He just should have let the ball go. They could have had the ball at about the 10-yard line. He tried to make a play on it. And you can see CU's trying to make plays, but they need to be smart when they try to make plays. CU with John Hessler at quarterback. They're at the 20-yard line. First time they've touched the ball on offense, and this is Herschel Trotman. Did he drop? Yeah, he lost the ball. At around the 23, a big pileup. Iowa State yelling it has the ball. No call from the Zebras yet, though. Yes, now it is Iowa State's ball. First play from scrimmage, the Buffs fumble it away. Herschel just going to take a handoff over the left side. Good, great blocking up front by the offensive lineman. He just, the ball got ripped out of there trying to switch hands. He just needs to put two arms on it and get up the middle. Looks like Marklin Cabbage fell on that ball. Illinois State, pretty good when it comes to the turnover category. This year they are plus six, which means they have six more turnovers. They have recovered six more than the opposition. So Illinois State catching a big break early in this ball game. And it looks like a penalty against Iowa State. There might have been some movement on that offensive line. One of the problems with coming out and playing with a lot of emotion is sometimes the emotion can be a little bit too much. You get a little bit excited and jump across the uh, line of scrimmage. Now that penalty against the Buffs. And that'll bring the ball down to the CU 19-yard line. Couple of running backs lined up behind Doxon. That's Guggenheim, the fullback, in motion. And then Davis follows him through. Picked up about a yard. In on the tackle, Ryan Olson and Donnell Liamidi. You see Davis taking a little handoff off the right side. Big hole there. Tries to cut back inside. Colorado does a good job stacking him up for a gain of about a yard. A good block by the fullback Guggenheim, but the rest of the offensive line didn't help out too well. That'll bring up second and four. And CU again jumps offside, but gets back in time. Doxon on the option, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Down to the seven and a half before Steve Rosga brings him down. Yep. Earlier we talked about how Doxon can run the ball. He is a threat running the ball. He's more of a threat running it than he is passing it. They're going to come out and do a little option play here. Big hole opens up. He takes it up, gets his shoulder square. That play works because Colorado shut down the pass outside, worried about Davis, and he jumped up in the hole. Well, somebody better start worrying about Doxon. Believe it or not, he was their leading rusher last year with 375 yards. The quarterback was the leading rusher. First and goal from the nine. This is Davis. And he powers his way down to the goal line. Steve Rosga the stop. He is inches from pay dirt. Davis, you should see he's going to cut back here. That's Cutback runners are tough runners to defend because they get in behind those offensive linemen. They go out the back door. You're going to see, here's a better angle of it. You're going to see him come out the back door there. Square his shoulders up. He's short. He's got great pad level and good leg drive. Gets him down to only to about the one-yard line. Second and goal from the one. Davis leaps, but doesn't make it. Matt Russell there getting congratulations. He was in on the stop. Dox is going to give a little handoff, a little jump handoff to uh, Davis here. He's going to try to go over the top. See you get the guy up in the air. Great job making a tackle. Ryan Black also helping out, pushing the momentum back. That'll bring up third and goal from the one. So 
They'll try Davis again. He goes in standing up. Well, Rick Neuheisel told us he wanted to come out to a fast lead. It's working just the opposite way, Jeff. Yeah, you know, they're, they're just... I think they're just playing with too much emotion right now. They're not thinking. They're, they're jumping off sides. They're making some mistakes up front defensively. Those are the things that you can't have. You've got to settle down, get back into your game plan, and just go from there. Jamie Cole on for the extra point attempt. Freshman out of Waukesha, Wisconsin. And he is true. And Iowa State, with less than five minutes gone in this ball game, jumps off to a seven to nothing lead. It's the fall truck blowout at North Glen Dodge. We've got over 200 trucks in stock, priced from only $10,988 with payments as low as $99 a month. Right now! Save thousands and choose from a huge selection of Ram and Dakota trucks, club cabs, dualies, 4x4s, and more. With factory direct rebates, low, low financing, and payments of only $99 a month, these deals can't be beat, these deals won't be beat. The fall truck blowout. Right here, right now, North Glen Dodge. Just west of I-25 on 104th. News 4. This is who we are. Get in the game with a station that's the home of the Broncos. Every week you'll get the inside story on the Mike Shanahan Show. Be part of a new era in CU football with the station that's the home of the Buffaloes. And catch the Rick Neuheisel Show only on News 4. Witness groundbreaking coverage of CU women's basketball and the remarkable achievements of high school athletes. A tradition of leadership in sports coverage. News 4. We are Colorado's news channel. This is the new Infinity G20, and this is Infinity's new electronic key. Now, I'm going to have to talk fast, so listen. Get out, press this, lock all the doors. If you can't remember what you just did, in which case it's going to be a long day, press this. It shows you the car is locked. On your way back, press this and open the trunk. Unlock the driver's door, unlock all the doors. And if some oddball is hanging about your car, press this. Shh. Shh. I wonder what this is for. Shh. Shh. Now you can lease the Infinity G20 at a very special rate for a limited time. Well, the CU Buffs and head coach Rick Neuheisel having a little trouble getting on track here in Ames, Iowa. A fumble deep in their own territory. Iowa State recovered, and Troy Davis took it in for the touchdown, and the Iowa State 7 0 lead. The Cyclones getting ready to kick off. You're looking at Jamie Cole. And back to receive it for CU. That's Lyndon Henry. And the man just to his left at the top part of your screen, Herschel Trout. Low line drive. This is Henry from his own two. Looking for the hole. Can't find one, and he's stacked up at his own 24-yard line. Troy Davis, you go to your workhorse when you get down there close to the end zone. Goes off the right side. Great job up front by Iowa State's offensive line, and he pops in untouched. That's his 11th touchdown of the year. See you with the football right now. John Hessler at quarterback, the lone running back behind him, Herschel Troutman. Hessler play action. Terrible pass. And Hessler takes the blame. You see him pointing to himself. See you needs to just regain the confidence. We talked about that earlier. They need to come out. We talked about emotion. They may be playing with too much emotion right now. They need to regain their confidence, get into a rhythm, complete a couple passes, make some big runs, then they can settle down and get back into their game plan. Hessler has thrown for 876 yards. He's thrown nine touchdown passes, just one interception all year long. This is Trotman on second and ten. Picks up about three. Go down to the field now, Mark McIntosh. Thank you, Les. Uh, you saw John Hessler's ball go right into the uh, the ground there on that pass. One thing you got to worry about on a windy day like this, if you don't throw a real tight spiral, and, and sometimes John Hessler does not throw a real tight spiral, that wind will catch the ball and drive it straight into the turf, and that's what happened on that first pass. There wasn't a tight spiral on it, and it wobbled right into the turf. Back to you guys. Another passing situation, this time complete. Very close to a first down. 
The receiver was the tight end, Matt Lepsis. The man making the tackle was Matt Strait. This is little, just a little short pass. In the windy conditions, throwing shorter pass routes, like a little slant route you see here, are going to be very important for CU to connect on. Get the ball to your receivers quickly. Let them make the moves to get up the field. And they're going to bring out the chains to measure this to see if Matt Strait did, in fact, stop Lepsis from getting the first down. No, he did not. First down, CU. Talking a little bit about what Mac was talking about earlier, Mark McIntosh on the sideline. If you throw a ball that wobbles in the wind, it can do one of two things. Two, actually two different things. It can either come out of your arm and go straight into the ground, or it can flutter a little bit and float. That makes the ball really easy to pick off. On first down, CU lines up two wide receivers, both to the left of Hessler. And Trotman gets the carry. He is across the 40-yard line. Pickup of six. Mark Linkavage there to help on the tackle. Same with Jason Putz. Herschel Trapman's been the workhorse for CU. He's going to go over the left side here. Great job up front by CU's offensive line. Uh, Chris Naoli and Brian Stoltenberg doing a good job. He will hang on to that ball. I'm sure they said something to him on the sideline as you need to hang on to the ball, Herschel. <laughs> Second and four. Trotman again. More first down yardage. Plus, he is down across the 45-yard line into Iowa State territory. Jason Brown the stop. Troutman is a lot like Troy Davis. He's short. He can get in behind his offensive line. You see Kyle Smith and Heath Irwin doing a great job. He did a cutback run. We talked about cutback runs early. Cutback runs are probably the biggest gainers for running backs if they can do it. Gain of 17 yards for Herschel Troutman. See you now in Iowa State territory. Troutman gets the call again. He is inside the 40. Call it a gain of three. Rudy Ruffalo the stop. Jeff, what is that thing on the back of Herschel Troutman right there at his hip level? Those are just pads. A lot of times, your shoulder pads, they'll even hook some rib pads that hook onto the back of that. That just protects his lower back from getting hit. Those, that's something that I wore. I actually wore the whole thing when I played for Detroit. I wore the whole rib cage uh, unit that came with that. Yet you still came away with some back problems, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> and you're reminded of it every morning, every aren't you? Every morning. <laughs> on second and seven, going deep, it's Carruth. And he is down to the two-yard line. Mike Linkavage, the touchdown-saving tackle. Offensive line. They can't say enough about CU's offensive line. They do a great job in protecting. He sits in the pocket. He has time. Throws a nice ball with the wind. Great post route by Carruth. Big gainer for CU. Very nice catch by Carruth. A bit behind him. He went up. Grabbed it, tucked it down, and got it to the two-yard line. Where it'll be first and goal. Ray Carruth coming in, averaging 22 yards a catch. He can run a little bit, huh? Just a little. <laughs> Troutman. Down to the goal line. No touch. Yes, touchdown. The arms just went up. Touchdown, CU. What you're going to see here is Herschel Troutman with two arms on the ball. You see, they tried to grab it out of there on him. He had two arms on the ball. Earlier, he got he fumbled trying, uh, trying to switch ball from arm to arm. He had two hands on the ball. Good job. Good leg drive getting in the end zone. Keith Miller is the man coming off the field with some help from the training staff. Keith, the junior running back out of Ovid, Colorado. He was in as a blocking back on that play. Did his job but paid for it. And now on for the extra point attempt, Neil Voskaricchio. He's perfect on the year so far in this situation, 27 for 27. He's got it. And we have a tie. We're about halfway through the first quarter and we're all knotted up at seven.
I trained my boy McNeely to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champ, and he did for 89 seconds. He didn't back down from any combinations thrown at him, and he ain't backing down from this one. There's a new stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. Not just cheese, but pepperoni baked right into the crust. So good you'll eat it backwards. Show him, kid. The new one-two combination cheese and pepperoni stuffed crust pizza. Hey, McNeely, how many slices am I holding? Can a car that pushes the envelope of design and technology hold the line when it comes to price? Consider the innovative Dodge Stratus. There's an advanced multi-valve engine, dual airbag, air conditioning, cassette stereo. In fact, more standard features than Ford Contour, Nissan Altima, and Honda Accord. More passenger room, too. And Stratus offers one more innovation, better value, and a price starting at just $14,995. Dodge Stratus. It's full of answers. Hey, Flyboy, come be in there? Unless you check the hard side suitcase, we have a major crisis downstairs. You thought coach was bad. It's a war zone down here. That's why I checked the Samsonite hard side. Hey, isn't that your bag? When you check a hard side, your clothes won't come out looking like origami. Sir, could you please return to your seat? Samsonite hard side. Life is hard. Don't go soft. What's this thing do? Les Shapiro and Jeff Campbell with you back at Cyclone Stadium in Ames, Iowa, where CU just tied up this ball game, 7-7. Jason Leslie getting ready to kick off. He's going to have a little problem when we get into November with that bare foot. <laughs> it's going to be frozen on an asphalt turf, on an asphalt turf up field somewhere. I wonder if he would have kicked off four years ago when it was about 20 degrees below zero here with 14 inches of snow. I wonder if he would have worn a shoe then. This is Jahi Arnold from his own four-yard line. And once again, there's room on the sideline. And Arnold finally run out of bounds by Darren Fisk at about the 32. Herschel Troutman, you get a good look at this touchdown. Herschel Troutman gets right in there behind his blocking back and his offensive lineman and does a great job with the leg drive to get the last yard of that touchdown run. That scoring drive went eight plays, 75 yards. The Buffs used up three minutes and five seconds. I got a chance to talk to Bobby Anderson about being a blocking fullback, what that's like. And he said, you know, by the end of the season, every part of your body hurts. So you're trying to use whatever is healthiest to make the block. I'll bet the shoulders take a beating, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. On that last play, Keith Miller's leg took a beating, and he came limping off the field. Iowa State from its own 32. This is Davis. Don't be surprised if he gets that ball 30 to 40 times this game. He actually did carry it 40 times against Ohio University earlier this year. You talk about a day's work. I'll tell you what. Davis is the only sophomore in college football history to rush for over 1,000 yards in just five games. That's doing some work. He broke Emmett Smith's high school rushing record in Florida. That's some pretty good company. Yeah, that's some pretty good company. There's only one team that's held him under 100 yards this year, and that's Oklahoma. The Sooners with the best rushing defense in the country. Second and nine. On the option, Doc pitches to Davis. And Donnell Liamini has him in his sights and runs him out of bounds at the 38. Donnell Liamini did a great job there being patient letting Troy Davis make his move and get out there on him. They're going to run a little option play down the line of scrimmage here. Great job taking the quarterback up front. The pitch comes out. Donnell Leomedi's job now is to string that out and make Davis beat Donnell. Donnell did a good job being patient and tackling Davis. Donnell Leomedi out of American Samoa. One of his high school coaches was a former buff, Oakland Salavea. Oakland. Your, your ex-roommate at CU, correct? Yeah, yeah, one of the six. <laughs> you had six roommates yes, in college? Did. Whatever it took to make oh, the rent lower. Oh, my goodness. The real-life animal house, huh? <laughs> <laughs> On third and four, the pass complete to Ed Williams. I'll be curious to see where they mark this ball. Looks like he might be about a half yard short of the first down. Ed Williams is going to come out here and run about a 10-yard stop route come back he does a good job coming back to the ball that keeps the separation from the db tj cunningham and a host of other buffaloes do a great job in gang tackling 
That's the emotion coming up. They got guys running around doing a good job gang tackling on Iowa State. We are going to get a measurement. It was T.J. Cunningham and Mike Phillips reacting to that play and driving him back. You know, talking to the people from Iowa State uh, in the beginning of the game, they were saying that Ed Williams is probably their third best offensive threat behind Davis and Dockton, their quarterback. So he's a guy that'll play a part in this game, too. Fourth down, and Ed McCarney, the first-year head coach at Iowa State, has a decision to make. He's in his own territory at the 42. What would you do, Jeff? I'll tell you one thing. First off, that they teach a receiver is make sure that you have the yardage on third down to get the first down. That's not a fun time to come off the sidelines when you didn't get the third down yardage when you could have had it and your coach is in your ear. Well, looks like Iowa State's going for it. Fourth and one at their own 42. I don't know if this is a very smart move. I'll tell you, I don't know if it's really smart either. See, you probably stick a whole bunch of people up on the, the uh, line and see if they can stop Davis. Oh, don't you have Davis in the game? Doxton on the keeper. Looks like he's got it. I wonder how oh, much the wind. The I wonder how much the wind had to do with that decision. He would have been punting into the wind. Probably a lot. You get a, you get a punt that goes up in the wind. The flags on the top of this stadium now are blowing like crazy. There's a chance that if he doesn't get that punt really good, it might end up going backwards. The wind's blowing pretty good here. Which can always be embarrassing. Yes, it can. <laughs> Dan McCartney, 42 years old, his first year with Iowa State, first year as a head coach on any level, but he has some pretty good credentials. He was an assistant at Iowa for 13 years, just up the road, then at the University of Wisconsin for five years. So 18 years altogether in the Big Ten. This is his first time in the Big Eight. On first down, Doxton throwing. The intended receiver was Horacek, but he didn't even know the ball was coming. little miscommunication by Horacek and Doxton there. They probably had an adjustment off of that route. So you gave press coverage, which means the DB is up on top of the uh, receiver. He ran a fade. He was throwing the hitch route. Those kind of mistakes are not the thing that the coach likes during the game. And you hear about it during the week. Yes, you do. Second and 10. Iowa State at its own 43. We're all tied up, seven apiece with 5.50 to go first quarter. From the shotgun, first time we've seen the Cyclones in that formation. Doxton throwing on the run. It's complete to Horacek, and he's pushed out of bounds at his own 49. Kenny Wilkins on the coverage. They'll line three receivers up to the right side, so the chances of flooding a zone in that situation are pretty good. He does a little rollout pass. They flood the zone with a receiver high and a receiver low. Kenny Wilkins does a great job in coverage on that. You'll see a better look at it here. Receiver, they're going to flood the zone. You see the flat route. You see the route up top. Kenny Wilkins breaks on the ball. He's just a little bit late, but they only got five yards out of it. Third and five for ISU. Doxton to throw again. Extended receiver, Horacek, and once again on the coverage is Wilkins. That'll bring up another fourth down, and this time it looks like Iowa State will punt the ball. Now we'll see what he does. He may just line drive this kick like he did the last time. That was really smart. He got a good roll out of it. It's tough to see where Rosga is. If that ball gets up in the air, it is really tough to see the ball because of the sun. So not only does Rosga have to deal with the punt ball, but he's got to deal with the sun also. Mark Harris, you're right, a line drive. And Rosga lets it go, and you were right about that also. It looked like Rosga had trouble with the sun. And Iowa State downs the ball at the half-yard line. No, they're calling it a touchback. They are calling it a touchback. Part of the Iowa State defender's body was in the end zone when he recovered the ball, so that's going to make it a touchback. Now, it's tough. You, catch, you get a ball in windy conditions, it's tough enough to catch the punt, but when you have the sun to deal with, it makes it even tougher. It was Preston Ramey trying to down the ball at the goal line. Let's take a look at it right here. You see him trying to shade his body to the ball. Another thing that Steve could do is he could put his hand up on his helmet. That's not a fair catch signal. Your hand's got to go over the top of your helmet for a fair catch signal, so he may try to do that a little bit better. He actually was able to down the ball 
outside the goal line, but you're right. Half of his body was inside. The end. Hessler's pass to Matt Lepsis is complete. And the Buffs are off to their own 33-yard line. Tim Sanders the stop. Hessler's really throwing a nice, pa nice pass. The thing that CU has going for him right now is they're gaining their confidence. He's throwing the ball, the ball downwind, so it's easier to throw it. If it flutters, it's not going to be that much of, of not, not a big deal because it'll probably just fly down the field. Going into the wind, if you throw a ball that flutters, chances of it getting picked off are pretty good. First down for the Buffs. They keep it on the ground. This is dropped in a big hole. He's across the 40 to about the 42. Angelo Provenza, sophomore from Colorado, makes the tackle. Kyle Smith and Keith Irwin are doing a great job on the left side of the line. Little counteraction. He's going to go over the left side. Great blocks outside. Cuts back up inside. Gets his shoulder square and his shoulder pads down to gain some extra yards after he gets hit. He got hit by Provenza, as I said. A young man who went to Smoky Hill High School in Aurora, Colorado. And we'll get another measurement, see if the Buffs picked up another first down. Just about a half foot short. So that'll give him some room to play a little for a couple of downs. It'll be second and less than one. I think you go over Stoltenberg here. I think you do a little quarterback sneak over the right or the left of Stoltenberg. Let those calves do the work. And you know what I think? I think Rick Neuheisel should go deep right now <laughs> because it's second and a half a foot and you're with the wind. That might be smart. You know, you never know what could happen. Troutman's numbers on the day so far, having a pretty nice one. 45 yards rushing, averaging over six yards a carry. Three wide receivers in the ball game. Hessler throwing. The quick pass to Savoy right in the gut, but Savoy drops it. Jason Brown wrapped his arms around Phil. They call that gator arms as a receiver. When you know that you're going to get blown up. Savoy does a great job. Little outside move to make the slant. You see the linebacker coming in there. For some reason, your arms shorten up in that situation. My arms have shortened up many times during that situation. Yeah, he catches that ball. It's a Phil Savoy sandwich. <laughs> He's the dead meat. Now it's third and one. Five minutes to go, first quarter. Troutman, the ball carrier. He picks up the first down and a little more. Gain of about four. Please Tim Sanders to stop. Sanders and Brown also into the play. Troutman is really, really impressive. You see, he gets a lot of speed going into the line right over Stoltenberg does a great job that play works because Stoltenberg does a great job moving some of those offensive linemen around in there they pull one of the other guards into the hole and then Troutman does the rest you know Troutman's only five six maybe I'm taller than Troutman which is pretty amazing no and he's way. got great leg drive no way unbelievable huh I can hardly see over the desk well, 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 I didn't think you were taller than anyone <laughs> Herschel Troutman into Iowa State territory now down to the 45 Provenza the stop again. CU's been working that left side. Now they go over Stoltenberg and Heath Irwin. You see Troutman make a good cutback. He's going to put both hands on the ball. Maybe? No, he doesn't. He'll probably get told to put both hands on the ball, but he does have some good leg drive like I talked about earlier, getting up the field and getting those extra yards. They always talk about yards after the hit. Second and three. Big time tries the left side. Doesn't get very far with it, however. So you he might, might have picked up the first down, Jeff. Yeah, he did pick up the first down. They see you must see something on the left side of ISU's defense because they seem to be running to the left. Great block there by Stoltenberg. Troutman does a good job cutting back, getting his shoulder square like I talked about earlier. That's, the, that's why those type plays work. When you only need a couple yards for the first down, they tell running backs to dip your shoulders, get your shoulder square, and get good leg drive, and that's what he's been doing all day. Uh, I'll tell you what they might see. Dan McCarney's team is very small up front and very small at the linebacker position, particularly on the left side where Provenza goes 207 pounds and Tim Sanders goes only 211 at linebacker. Hessler <laughs> falls. And in college ball, once the knee goes down, the play is stopped. Mark McIntosh talked earlier about the, how old this turf is, how slippery this turf is. 
you'll see Hessler backing out of here. Great play fake. He's looking downfield to see what happens. He's trying to plant his feet here, and he just falls down. You know, another thing is, is sometimes when AstroTurf fields get painted, they're either really rough on the paint or they're really slippery on the paint. And he just stepped and, and couldn't get his balance. In the pros, the quarterback can get back up from a situation like that and still throw the ball or run with it. In college ball, once the knee is down, the player is down. Second and 20. Oh. tries the screen pass, but it's incomplete. He's trying to work a little screen to Shiverini on the outside. He's going to take a step up field and come back towards the line of scrimmage. He just got a lost concentration on the ball. And uh, you're going to see a little bit better here. To see him take a step, come back inside towards the line of scrimmage. His other receivers will actually go down the field and, and uh, get in the way or try to make a pick. He just didn't look the ball in. And uh, that's okay. That's just something that they've got to get corrected. They can't make that kind of mistake if they want to win the game. So far in the afternoon, the Buffs are perfect in third down situations, two for two. But this one, unlikely on third and 20. Three wide receivers all on the left side. Hessler going to one of them. It's Savoy. And there's a flag down. A couple of defenders smashed into him. The question is, was it before he was... My guess is it's going to be the pass or after. Yeah, defensive pass interference. Looks like it's coming back, Jeff. Oh, offensive pass interference. We may have had a little bit of pushing going on out there by Phil. Well, I don't know. That's that's uh, that's real. That's a really iffy call. I think. I thought both players went up for the ball. I just think that should be incomplete. Just the offense. Fill in supply. Fourth down. That'll bring up fourth down, and for the first time this afternoon, the Bucks will bring out the punting unit. That's unfortunate, because I really didn't see any infraction. I thought both players went up and did a good job batting the ball down. Yeah, I don't know that it matters a whole lot. See, so you would be punting either way right now anyway. Andy Mitchell. He's averaging 42 yards a kick. This one off the side of his foot. Plus, not a very good bounce. Still, the ball fairly deep in Iowa State territory, where the Cyclones will start with it at the 19-yard line. We've got 2.20 to go first quarter. We're all tied up at 7, and we'll take a break. Life rarely imitates orange cones. Orange cones, however, can be made to imitate life. At Lexus, we've created a suspension system so advanced, it's smooth when you want it to be, and responsive when you need it to be. The 1996 LS400. Impossible. The laws of Lexus state otherwise. When does a great GMC truck get even better? During the October Accessory Fest. Buy any Sierra or Jimmy and get $250 in accessories at no extra charge, like a bed liner. Or make your new truck even better with $250 in accessories, like a trailer hitch or a tonneau cover or running boards or any other accessories at no extra charge. So hurry in and get $250 worth of accessories during the October Accessory Fest at your Colorado GMC truck dealer today. Iowa State with the ball. We're all tied up at seven. Still in the first quarter in Ames, Iowa. Yeah, both these teams have had a brutal run in the schedule lately. CU, of course, has played four out of its six games against ranked teams. And for Iowa State, this is the third game in a row against a ranked team. Cyclones from their own 20. Roy Davis, the leading rusher in the nation. He's stacked up by Ron Merkerson and a few other black and white jerseys. 
Troy Davis is the guy that you have got to stop. He's their workhorse, like I talked about earlier. He's going to go over the right side of their line. Merkerson does a good job containing him, pushing the offensive lineman backwards, actually pancaking him over the top and making a tackle. For now, the, the Troy Davis yard -o meter hasn't moved very much. No, in fact, uh, he has seven carries today, and he's gone for only 17 yards. On second and nine, Doxton in trouble. Escapes it. And does the smart thing and goes down at his own 34-yard line, picks up the first down, Steve Rosga with the touch tackle. See, you actually had good pressure up front. You see Beely Mau coming over the left side, going to go in and almost made the tackle there. Doxson, with his running ability, does a great job getting upfield. And uh, CU has to tackle him about 20 yards down the field. Uh, the Oklahoma players were very impressed with Todd Doxson's running ability. They said he's very shifty. And one of the Sooners likened him to a gazelle. And you can see it there on that play. Yeah, he can run for a quarterback. He's, he's uh, a very good runner. First down at their own 34. On the option, he pitched to Davis. And he takes it across the 40. Finally run out of bounds at about the 43. Matt Russell there, along with Hannibal Navies, the freshman linebacker. Now, Doxon can run, and he does have a cast of, of players that he can do, but two weeks ago against Oklahoma, he did throw for 200 yards with a 90-yard touchdown. You see the option here to Davis. Davis, with, with his speed getting outside, there's a great block down on, uh, on Rosga, and they see who does a good job just pushing him out of bounds. Second and one. Iowa State's lone touchdown came after a CU fumble at its own 23. They were able to go in easily after that. This is Davis. And he doesn't get very far. Does not get the first down. And that'll bring up third and short. You see CU's defense swarming around to make that tackle. That's what I'm talking about earlier, about emotion. Guys raising their level of play to win the football game. You know, back to Doxon, um, he, he's tough for defenses to defend because he can run, and like I said earlier, through for 200 yards against Oklahoma two weeks ago, so he can, all, he can also pass. So that, that, that presents a lot of problems to a defense, you know, like a Steve Young, who, if he gets outside of the pocket, he can run forever. Third and one. Clock winding down. We've got 20 seconds to go, first quarter. Davis again. This time he's got it. And pushes his way to midfield. Troy Davis using every bit of his 185 pounds, pulling one of the CU players down the field. You know, I alluded to earlier about leg drive. He has great leg drive. A lot of the best running backs in the country have, all have great leg drive. Troy Davis had a, a day against UNLV. I don't know any other way to describe it. 302 yards rushing. That's the best single game performance in Iowa State history. That's the end of the first quarter. Iowa State will have the ball at midfield when we come back for the second. I just started my own company, so I leased a new Volkswagen facade. $259 a month, it's the best deal around. I'm marketing an electronic toll collecting device, so you'll never have to stop to pay for a toll again. Good news for drivers. The thoughts are true German road car. Track correcting rear suspension, rack and pinion steering. And oh yeah, four-wheel disc brakes. But hopefully you won't be using them to stop the toll booth anymore. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. This is the place to get the card that gives you the discounts you can use on these days. That puts you here here and here and lets you do this this is the price of the card you get here news four is where you'll hear about the discounts at not one but three ski resorts but this is how long the deal lasts so get the ski three card today at front range christie sports sponsored by news four need new tires in a hurry at discount tire company we move fast except when it comes to closing our doors. Slide in for a new set of Michelin at Discount Tire Company. Today's game is brought to you by Blackjack Pizza, by your Front Range Jeep and Eagle dealer, by Midas, and by Ankmar Door.
Les Shapiro and Jeff Campbell with you in Ames, Iowa. We're getting ready to start the second quarter at Jack Trice Field. All knotted up 7-7. Dan McCartney, he replaced the entertaining but ineffective Jim Walden, who struggled through his eight seasons as the head coach here. Rick Neutheisel, of course, in his first year as the head coach at CU. Jim Walden was a great guy. I played under Jim Walden at the uh, the uh, uh, one of the bowl games, the East-West Shrine game, and he told me that his offensive linemen sometimes stood around so much that they were the only people that could kill AstroTurf. <laughs> McCartney replacing a popular man. Jim Walden, very entertaining. Very animated. Neuheisel met with him last night at the team hotel. They had a little chat for about 15 minutes. I wonder what was said in that conversation. I don't know. <laughs> and Rick wouldn't tell me. <laughs> Doxon going deep. The intended receiver was Ed Williams, and there's a flag. I don't know about that one, Jeff. It looked like the ball was far over Ed Williams' head by the time he was hit. Yeah, I think that was an uncatchable ball, too. T.J. Cunningham actually had great position on the throw. To get a better angle of it here, maybe we can see better if he actually did bump into it. Little play action fake on the reverse. They throw a little post route down the field. T.J. may have gotten there just a little bit early. But that's really close. That's a judgment call there by the by the referee. It also wasn't See, catchable. Close. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's not a catchable ball. When you're a receiver and you're in that position and you know you can't catch a ball, it's like a gift if they throw that flag. Ten yards, the spot, on the line of first down. It's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Once again, the difference between college and the pros. On pass interference in the pros, the ball goes at the point of the infraction. Here it's just a 15-yard penalty. Iowa State with the ball at the CU 36-yard line. We're just underway, second quarter. Troy Davis drives the left side, gets nowhere. Maybe a yard. After carrying the ball for 30 to 40 times a game, I wonder what Troy Davis feels like during the rest of the week. Well, you know, when you're a sophomore and you're 19 or 20 years old, you bounce back pretty quickly. Yeah, you're, you're, when you're a, a bit grizzled, more resilient. <laughs> when you're a grizzled NFL veteran like yourself, <laughs> yeah. you, you need uh, five or six days. You're not feeling better until Friday. <laughs> yeah. Second and nine, especially on this AstroTurf. You feel it that much more. Oh. Doxon completes the Guggenheim, the fullback. This surprise to see you. And he's inside the 15-yard line. They don't throw to Guggenheim a whole lot. He only has three catches on the year. Guggenheim does a great job. The receivers from Iowa State actually run a little pick play here. You'll see him come into your screen. You might see him come in right there. Little pick play to get the corner out of there, the safety out of there. They run Guggenheim out on a little uh, flare pattern and do a great job. You see a little flare pattern coming there, and he does a good job getting up the field. And see you, Rosga and Cunningham pushing him out of bounds. He is compact, to say the least. Five foot ten, 217 pounds. And another first down for Iowa State. They're at the 11-yard line of CU. Davis. Davis. his way inside the 10, down to about the 7. First quarter stats for you. Everything pretty even. Total yards for CU, 107 to just 63 for Iowa State. Iowa State did not have to go very far for their touchdown after the CU turnover. You know those swing or flare patterns that we were just talking about that Guggenheim caught are tough ways for defenses to defend if somebody makes a mistake up front because a running back can catch the ball and get right up the field because there's nobody out there if the corner is gone. New fullback in the game for Iowa State. Parman Tier blocking for Davis. He surges inside the five. Gain of about three. Iowa State's put a nice little drive together here. They've mixed both the run and the pass. They've done a good job with their running back. You know, if they can keep doing that, CU's defense is going to need to make some adjustments to stop it. You also have to throw in a pass interference call on CU that kept that drive alive. It's third and three. Big play for the CU defense here. 
Dotson going to the end zone. Ed Williams. Incomplete. Both Williams and the defender, T.J. Cunningham, had their mitts on that ball, but neither could come down with it. T.J. did a great job with the position there. You're going to see Cunningham a little play in man-to-man coverage on the line. He's going to back off the line. They're going to try to use Williams' height to his advantage. And Cunningham does a great job getting up to the ball. They always tell defensive backs to get to the highest point to try to knock the ball down, and that's exactly what T.J. Cunningham did. T.J. six feet tall going against the guy, Ed Williams, who is 6'3". T.J. did a good job getting up, as Jeff said. Jamie Cole comes on for the field goal attempt. He's 6 for 10 on the year. This one a 20-yarder. And this will give Iowa State the lead if he makes it. And he does. And the Cyclones go back up 10 to 7. About two and a half minutes gone in the second quarter. We'll take a break at Cyclone Stadium. This is who we are. Beyond information, more than simple description. News for tonight is committed to providing a better understanding of what's going on and why. News is our only business. And that's why we bring you more of the story. Late breaking news, specialist features, exclusive reports. At 10 o'clock, there's one source for news that goes beyond the headlines. News for tonight, Colorado's News Channel. Here's your wake-up call, nature lover. If that didn't work, try this. Now, for under 19000 get a classic Jeep Cherokee with 190 horsepower, no-charge air, four-wheel drive, quadrolink suspension, and driver's airbag, all for less than 19000 Now, if that didn't wake you up, try this. <laughs> See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Dear Midas, my wife's brake light had been flashing on, so we took the car to a repair shop. They failed to properly inspect the brakes and solve the problem. Then we took the car to Midas, requested a proper inspection, and told me... Oh, your brake pads are worn. Called your master cylinder to use more brake fluid, in turn causing your light to go on. Then I got new pads and a guarantee. I should complain to that repair shop, but I wanted to congratulate you instead. Thank you. Dave Buchanan. Head coach Dan McCarney of Iowa State, his team just took the lead from CU 10 to 7, early second quarter. Rick Neuheisel, another fight on CU's hands against the Cyclones. Over the last three years, CU has struggled in here a little bit. Last year, it took, uh, you know, a couple touchdowns in the fourth quarter to win the game, but they pulled ahead. And two years ago, the score of the game was 21-16 CU. So they've come in here and, and had a hard time winning. On the run back, Herschel Troutman gets the ball out to his own 19-yard line. And even though CU has won the last 11 games between these schools, the Buffs have struggled to beat Iowa State. Troutman on the day, 62 yards rushing. Outshining his counterpart, the much more heralded Troy Davis on the other side of the field. But we've got a lot of football left. That's for the quarterback, Troutman in backfield. Don Hessler playing into the wind. Stay on the ground. Herschel Troutman. Gain of a couple yards. Rudy Ruffalo. The stop. You're exactly right. You may see you see, see you run the ball a little bit more because they are going into the wind. Like I said earlier, throwing deep going this way probably won't happen. They'll probably stick to their slant routes, short three-step drops for the quarterback, try to get the ball off quick, short patterns with the receivers, and let the receivers do the rest of the work. You you may also see some little swing patterns by the backs out of the backfield. Second and seven. Short, fluttery pass. Matt Lepsis makes the, makes the catch. He's well short of the first down, however. Link Cabbage the tackle. Lepsis Les, does a good job going up and getting this ball. You'll see a short drop, about a five-step drop for Hessler. He's going to plant his feet. Good protection by the offensive line. Great catch. He uses his hands, soft hands, gets about a six-yard gain, but the ball's starting to flutter a little bit. You'll see the wind will do that a little bit when you're throwing into it. Now, that was a bit of a wobbler. Brings up third and three. On the option, Hessler keeps. 
Has the first down, has a lot of room across midfield. Cuts across and finally brought down at the Iowa State 23 yard line. That is spectacular downfield blocking by CU. You have offensive linemen running as hard as they could 40 yards down the field making some blocks. They'll run the option play. This is one thing that John Hessler, I think, does better than Coy Detmer, is he can run the option. He can run a little bit. He can get up in, makes a good cutback uh, uh, move there, gets down the sideline. This is what I'm talking about. you got guys going down the field making blocks for their quarterback. Those are That's a winning effort. 51-yard gain by Hessler. Something John Hessler does do a little better than Coy Detmer, and that's run with the ball. This is London Henry running with it. He makes a nice move, escapes a couple of tacklers, and finally run out of bounds at the 13. Lennon Henry, great cutback run. He goes into the line of scrimmage. There's nothing in the hole. that He's trying to get over the right side of the line. There's nothing there. There, they actually, Iowa State actually blitzed their corner on this. He makes a good move to get around the corner, back outside, and the receivers from CU do a good job blocking downfield. Very close to the first down, and the chains come out. London Henry with a good effort. We talked at the beginning of the telecast about how London Henry has played very, very well when he's in there this year, and Rick Neuheisel wanted to give him a little more work today. And he's young. He's only a sophomore, so he's got two more solid years of football left, and he, and he can improve, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's a long time to play in college, and uh, he can even improve more. He's a great running back right now. Came up a little short on that run of the first down. Call it a gain of nine, so it'll bring up second and one for the Buffs. They're down to the Iowa State 13-yard line. Short passes we talked about earlier are the, are the key to throwing into the wind. Staying on the ground. They're pro you probably see CU start using more of their three tandem running backs with Henry Troutman and um, uh, help me with the last name, Les. <laughs> The uh, last running Barnes. Back and Barnes, Marlon Barnes, excuse me. Second and one. Henry, the first down, maybe a touchdown, yes. Lyndon Henry, that's what I'm talking about, winning effort. You know, he gets in there and has does a great job with winning effort trying to get in the end zone. He's going to go over the right side over Chris Naoli and, and Melvin Thomas. Does a great job cutting, getting back up inside. Little spin move to get in the end zone. Keeps his legs driving. That's a great run. You notice how deathly quiet the stadium gets when the other team scores? Yeah. They got, for as many people that are here, they get really loud as far as when they get in the end zone. Oscar Ritchie in the extra point attempt. And CU with its first lead of the afternoon. The Buffs go up 14 to 10. We've got 10.42 to go, first half. Get truck into the freeway for savings on Ford trucks. Ford trucks are hard to find, but you'll find hundreds at Freeway Ford. I-25 on Evans, 95 to 96s, F-Series and Rangers. They're all at Freeway Ford. This week, choose from over 100 red tag F-Series trucks as low as $12,988. Drive an F-150 for only $150 a month. Save as much as $5,000. That's hundreds of America's best-selling trucks as low as $12,988 or only $150 a month. Get trucking now to Freeway Ford. At I-25 on Evans. Colorado, we take some things very seriously. All right, the blackjack's here. I wondered if you were going to make it. You know how serious I take my blackjack pizza. Blackjack pizza. This is serious pizza at a ridiculously low price. Get a large two-topping pizza for only $6.99. Call Colorado's own Blackjack Pizza. Acura engineers have taken the guesswork out of deciding what's fun and what's not so fun. So we can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Acura Integra is more fun than anything in its class. Now special lease rates are available on the Integra at Flatirons Acura, Mile High Acura, or Courtesy Acura. Rick Neuheisel drawing plays up for his CU Buffs on the sideline as they just took the lead over Iowa State, 14 to 10. Drawing the adjustments that they see from the booth, trying to take advantage of everything that Iowa State can do. 
Back to receive the kickoff for Iowa State as the ball comes off the tee because of the wind again. Jahi Arnold and Kevin Wilson. Arnold with two kickoff returns so far today for a total of 51 yards. He is one of the better kick returners in the nation. Came in averaging 31 and a half yards a return. Once again, Jeff Nabholtz is going to come out and hold the ball on the tee. Remember when you used to do this as a kid? You were always worried about the guy kicking your finger and breaking your finger? Well, you were a holder for all those years. Yeah, but, you know, if, if he kicks your finger and breaks your finger, you always have the option of picking the ball up as soon as he gets there to kick it, too. <laughs> the old Lucy on Charlie Brown, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Whatever it takes to win. Line drive into the wind. This is Wilson from his own four. Wilson at the four-yard line. And he is stopped at the 22 by Marcus Washington. The ball came loose. But it looks like Iowa State recovered. Special teams are such a vital, vital part of football. They can win ball games for you and they can lose ball games for you. Wilson, you'll see him get up into the wedge here. And he does a great job staying on his feet. You know, he, he, he's a tough runner, but he's getting ready to get hit by a host of CU guys and then take the shot from behind. You know, those are the shots that you feel the next morning when you're getting up and getting out of the shower. That scoring drive for CU took less than two minutes to go 81 yards. And the Buffs now have the lead 14 to 10. Iowa State on first down. This is Davis. He's up to his own 29. Call it a gain of eight. Ryan Black, the safety. The first white jersey to hit him. Ryan Black made a great hit on Troy Davis there. We had a, we used to have a coach in Detroit that used to say, when you make a great hit like that, it's like closing the gate. He went in and closed the gate and made a great tackle. Some other scores from around the nation. Texas, soon to be a member of the Big 12, leading its game in the second quarter. Second and three for Iowa State. Troy Davis followed the man in motion, Guggenheim, the fullback, and picked up a couple of yards, and he's very close to a first down. Matt Russell, the middle linebacker for CU, made the tackle. Matt Russell's also a semifinalist for the Butkus Award. He's really having a good year. He's had a great couple years in college. You see Troy Davis come off the right side here, good block outside, and now it's a fight. Who has a better leg drive? And I'll tell you what, Troy Davis has great leg drive because Matt Russell is a big, big, strong linebacker with a very, very interesting haircut. <laughs> <laughs> with a do-rag covering it. And Iowa State does pick up the first down. Matt making a few fashion statements today. The do-rag, the short haircut, and the, uh, the belly button exposure. Listening to Matt uh, last week during practice, he said he feels uncomfortable in air. He likes to be hit around like a, pink, like a pinball with a bunch of big fatties. <laughs> Only a linebacker would say that. Troy Davis with 50 yards rushing so far today. And a first down for Iowa State. ECU jumped on sides but got back. And this play will count. Troy Davis thrown for a loss by defensive end Daryl Price. Daryl Price has had an outstanding year. You know, catching Troy Davis from behind like that is tough. You see Troy, a little motion to try to get the, the end block. Troy does, uh, uh, it tries to get back outside. And Price does an outstanding job getting the leg tackled. And they lose about 10 yards on that play. I don't know how Daryl does it year after year. He's been fighting knee problems ever since high school. But he keeps bouncing back and standing out. Daryl Price has a great attitude. He's the kind of guy that'll go out and work for you. And when you've had that many knee problems, it's tough mentally to get yourself to want to go back out there and play. He actually has to carry less weight than most defensive backs because of these problems. He's only 255 pounds. That's Doxon on the scramble. Getting in his face is Mike Phillips. Talk about the turf and how slippery it is. You know, in Colorado's last stadium, they had some turf that was really, really slippery. And if you went one way on it, you slipped. But if you went the other way on it, it was it was really coarse and you could make a cut. You're going to see him get out of there, try to avoid the rush, gets up the field and just slips. So old turf will do that to you. This is pretty bad today, but it's certainly nowhere near what we saw at Missouri a few years ago during the fifth down game. I have, I, I have, I know nothing. I see nothing, I know nothing. 
<laughs> I was gone already. <laughs> Just to let everybody know that. On third and 16, Dotson, Zach. Take your pick. But it looks like Nick Ziegler was the first to get him. Liam Meaty and also Maurice Sunriquez there. And on Dotson the safety is, blitz. is limping. He's limping. Actually, he's hopping now off the field. Nick Ziegler does a great job getting good push, comes through, makes the sack. And, uh, you know, Dachson may have some problems. Donnell Leomitty and Steve Rosga also in there. So they were definitely bringing some guys up the middle, trying to put some pressure on Iowa State's offense. Well, they brought both safeties on that play, on Enriquez and Leomitty. And now Mark Harris will be punting from his own one-yard line with the win. Still not a very good kick. A line drive. Rosga at his own 41 drops the ball, but it bounces right back to him. And it keeps him from having a better return. You know, he did bobble that ball, but one thing that he did do well is he stayed square. If you drop a ball as a punt returner, you want it to drop in front of you so you stay square. We're going to take a break. We'll see you leading 14-10. Dear Midas, my wife's brake light had been flashing on, so we took the car to a repair shop. They failed to properly inspect the brakes and solve the problem. Then we took the car to Midas, rested a proper inspection, and told me... Well, your brake pads are worn. Caused your master cylinder to use more brake fluid, in turn causing your light to go on. Then I got new pads and a guarantee. I should complain to that repair shop, but I wanted to congratulate you instead. Thank you. Dave Buchanan. If you were to make a list of the safest towns in America, at the top of that list would be Eau Claire, Wisconsin. If you were to make a list of cars with the most standard safety features for the money, at the top of that list would be the Chevy Cavalier. So if you lived in Eau Claire and you drove a Cavalier, would that make you one of the safest people in America? Probably not, but it's a good start. There are some things in life you just can't do alone. Like driving on the North I-25 Downtown Express. So grab a partner. Carpools can now join RTD buses and save 13 minutes on the Downtown Express. Call Ride Arrangers for more information. Todd Doxson came off the field after the last sack, and he was obviously limping and obviously in a lot of pain. You see him there on the sideline. They're taking a look at his ankle, and, uh, you know, Todd Vandauer starting to warm up, so we may see a change in quarterback for Iowa State. Yeah. Lendon Henry for CU, powering his way across midfield and down to the Iowa State 41-yard line. Let's take a look at where Doxson got hurt now. Now, Doxson has had a sore left ankle for a couple of weeks. I think it just got twisted underneath the pile there, and he may have re-injured that. That's a tough one to come back from. But when you re-injure an injury, it hurts worse than the first time that you injure it. And he missed the first couple of games this year with that ankle injury. Jeff St. Clair came in to replace him as the starter. But right now, the man who's number two on the Iowa State depth chart at quarterback is John uh, Todd Bandauer. Right now, CU with the ball. Hessler, the play-action fake. Looking deep, a wobbler. And it's caught by Chris Anderson. The crowd yelling for offensive pass interference. They feel Anderson pushed off the defender, but no flags on the field, and CU is down to the Iowa State 15-yard line. Talking about throwing the ball into the wind again. If you don't come out and throw a tight spiral, it's going to wobble even more. See the receivers going down the field. He's going to come across the middle here, try to find the open zone where you're looking for windows in there. That's just incidental contact. That's nothing that's really going to get a ref to throw his flag. And actually... He has great concentration on catching that ball. When you run into something, it kind of throws your con con uh, concentration off a little bit. On first down, this is Henry. Staying on his feet. Down to the 12. Gain of three. You know, in, in defense of Steve Rosga, who, who had a little problem with the punt uh, a little while ago, he did stay square. The ball did bounce down in front of him. If you get yourself turned as a punt returner and that ball goes off to the side, it's really hard to recover. So he did a good job keeping the ball in front of him. He just got to have a little bit better handle on it. First down for the Buffs. They lead 14 to 10 with about five and a half minutes to go in the first half. And knocking on the door once more. The 
This is Henry. Room up the middle. And he is stopped at the six-yard line by Jason Brown. Lyndon Henry did everything he could possibly do to try to keep going and stay up on that route. See him try to go over Stoltenberg. Stoltenberg, great job up front. He gets back outside, and he's trying however he can to stay up and get in the end zone. Lyndon Henry is a little bit different angle of it. Great cut back outside. Does a great job. Of, you know, oh, that's lucky. He just got his shoestring and got him down. Kyle Smith did a good job opening up that middle, too, with a pretty good block. This is Marlon Barnes. His first carry of the day, and he's inside the five, down to the four. Tim Sanders, the stop. Terry Lewis has done an outstanding job with CU's offensive line. You know, those guys up front work so hard. Offensive linemen don't usually get the kind of publicity that your running backs, your quarterbacks, and your wide receivers get. But if it's not for that group of guys, your offense doesn't work. So they are actually the most important people on that field because if, if they're not winning up front for you, your team can't win. Well, that's what every coach says every year after every practice. It's the two lines that make or break your football team, the offensive and defensive lines. You can have all the stars you want at the skill positions on offense or defense, but it's the lines that make the difference. First and goal from the five, London Henry. Stacked up at the three. Jason puts one of those red jerseys in there first. Let's go down to the field, Mark McIntosh. You notice that time, Lyndon Henry squared his shoulders like you've talked about before, Jeff, and ran straight up field on his run before. Running back coach Ben Gregory wasn't real happy with him in that he scooted to the outside instead of cutting straight up field. He probably had a touchdown, and so he was removed for one play. Marlon Barnes came in, and coach Ben Gregory reminded him, you run to the goal line, boy. And he did that time, but there wasn't much of a hole. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. Second and goal from the three now. Henry, this time he's in. That's exactly what he did. He squared his shoulders up. He squared his shoulders up on the play before. So, you know, evidently he listened to the coaching, which is definitely a good idea. <laughs> 49 yards on the day so far for London Henry and his second touchdown. You heard Mac talk about the coach telling him he needed to square his shoulders. Well, he popped right up and squared his shoulders into the middle there, got into the touchdown, talking earlier about how good that offensive line is. They're that good. They blew a great hole in Iowa State's defense, and they got in for a score. Oscar Ritchie the extra point. It's perfect. And CU starting to pull away a bit from Iowa State. It's 21-10 with 3.46 to go, second quarter. You see, has really worked the left side of that offensive line and the right side of Iowa State's defense. Kyle Smith and Heath Irwin are really playing well over there. They're doing a great job getting Iowa State's defensive line off the ball. Great block there like by Leftis, and he pops right up and, and does a great job getting in the end zone. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC TV and the Group W CBS television station partners. Any rebroadcast or reuse of this telecast without the expressed written consent of KCNC TV and the Group W CBS television station partners is prohibited. Well, CU having a great day on the ground so far. Rick Neuheisel's men, 155 yards rushing. You know, talking to Rick last night, he really seemed, there was a different attitude. I, you had the chance actually to talk to Kerry Hicks during the week, and he said, if we could have played on Monday after we played Kansas, we would have played because we knew that we shouldn't have lost to Kansas, and, and they didn't want to have to have the bye week off to think about all that. So in talking to Rick last night, I asked him, do you think your team is much more hungry because uh, of, of the loss to Kansas and the bye week? And he said, absolutely. He said, practices were good, and, and we'll see today how well they play. And they've played really well so far. Well, and frankly, his goal today was not just to win, but, and he told us this last night, so it wouldn't get into the papers in Iowa too soon, he wanted to dominate the Cyclones. He felt if CU was on its game and came out with the emotion it was lacking, against Kansas, it could dominate Iowa State. And I think that that's, that's, a, that's a good thing because they do have a tough game coming up next week against Nebraska. You know, so you've got to come out and get your confidence levels back. We talked a little bit about that earlier where your defensive and offensive people need to have a lot of confidence in this game, not look over Iowa State, come out and play well against Iowa State, and then go into Nebraska with all the confidence in the world to go in there and try to beat the Huskers. I'm wondering how much that movie last night helped to see you. Yeah, they went and saw Assassins. 
probably for the defense. I don't know for the offense. He got some crazies on the offense too, you know. Matt Russell probably really enjoyed that movie. <laughs> Fumble on the kickoff. Iowa State does fall on it. And I don't know if you could tell from the wide shot on your television screen, but Jason Leslie put that ball high in the air and the wind just stopped it, almost as if the ball hit a brick wall and fell straight down. CU claiming that it recovered the ball on the fumble, but no, the officials say Iowa State did recover it. See this ball, maybe it blows around a little bit when he's coming to kick it. Tough to tell. There it goes. Oh, well, that, that's the one that they put back on the tee. <laughs> Last scoring drive for CU. Seven plays, culminating in the London Henry touchdown run, his second of the afternoon. And a new quarterback in for Iowa State. This is the freshman out of Lecanto, Florida, Todd Bandauer. Troy Davis. And he's up to the 45-yard line, Steve Rosga, the only man left between Davis and the end zone, and Rosga makes the tackle. We talked earlier about cutback runners. Troy Davis is small. He gets in there. He kind of gets lost in the offensive line in there. You can't see him, and all of a sudden he pops back out, goes to the left side, and does a great job for an 18-yard gain. Bandauer, Guggenheim, and Davis in the Cyclone backfield. Van Dauer has thrown just two passes this year. He's a freshman, as I said. But he has usurped Jeff St. Clair as the backup quarterback on this team. That's Davis again. So Iowa State believes, even though it's down by 11, it can get back into this game, giving the ball to Troy Davis repeatedly. Donnell Leo Mitty did a great job. That's a textbook tackle. He put his face mask right up on Troy Davis. They had kind of had a, a standoff there, and the rest of CU's defense came and made the rest of the tackle. Good tackle by Donnell Leo Meadey. Troy Davis. So he leads the nation in rushing with 187 yards a game today. However, just 67 so far. See you doing a pretty good job stopping him. Second and five. Davis again. Matt Russell the tackle. He's about four yards short of the first down, so that'll bring up third and four. Colorado's defense is tackling a lot better today than they did the last two weeks ago against Kansas. You see they're being a lot more aggressive. Matt Russell is the, the that's what you want in the linebacker. You want him to look like that. You want him to play like that. He probably goes home dressed in his uniform. And that's tough to be a Butkus Award candidate make the semifinals and then if he gets into the finals, Matt Russell will be in the finals, I would predict before his senior year's over. He certainly deserved it based on his play so far. Timeout on the field, Iowa State took it. That leaves the Cyclones with two timeouts. Buffs have their full complement of three still left. Well, don't forget to watch the Rick Neuheisel Show tomorrow night at 10.35, and that's only on News 4. It's the new place for in-depth analysis and highlights of today's game. News 4's Mark McIntosh and the coach himself We'll also preview the Buffs' big showdown next game against Nebraska. That's the Rick Neuheisel Show, Sunday nights at 1035, right here on News 4. Your home for the CU Buffs. All right, Jeff bringing up Nebraska. You knew we had to somewhere along the line here. How much does CU show today? Do they keep things close to the vest so as not to allow Nebraska to look at that game film and, and see something to prepare for the not so obvious I think you come out and you do whatever you can to win the football game here number one but I think you have to keep in the back of your mind that you don't want to show Nebraska a lot on what you're going to do offensively and defensively so it's important that CU plays well out here that they win the game and they don't show a lot for next week against Nebraska now in the last four years see who struggled a little bit with Nebraska but this is a lot different team they got a new coach and they can do a lot more I think with Rick third and four Iowa State on the Colorado 49-yard line. Van Dauer to throw. It's complete to the tight end, DiBiase, and it's a first down. A lot of times when you bring in a new quarterback like that, you'll throw the short little routes to get his confidence up. You won't start him out throwing a 20-yard out pattern or, or uh, throwing it 40 yards down the field, so they'll put him into short drop pattern so he gets a quick 
three-step drop, pops it over the middle here, and hits his tight end. Great play. That gives their quarterback some confidence in throwing the ball. According to the Iowa State coaching staff, Bandauer has the strongest arm of the three quarterbacks that do get work. You know how he learned how to throw? His mom was a PE teacher. She taught him. Hey, don't care for the mom. <laughs> On first down. Bandauer getting good pressure. Takes off with it. And a good pickup down to the CU 26-yard line. Ed Williams made an outstanding block down the field to spring Bandauer. He came back and made a block on a linebacker. You know, Bandauer shows his running ability here. He can also run. But Ed Williams is the guy that makes this play work down the field. He doesn't have anything, drops back in the pocket, starts to run, showing his running ability. And the block happened, to, you won't be able to see it, but the block happened a little bit farther back. And that's what sprung him for another 10 yards. Brandauer showing he can run it as well as throw it. And another first down for Iowa State. They're down to the CU 26. Facing a 21 to 10 deficit. This is Davis fumble. Don Eliamidi. He could go all the way. Brandauer chasing him. Liamidi will get into the end zone for a CU touchdown. 75 yards the other way after the Troy Davis fumble. Somebody put an incredible lick on Troy Davis to get that ball to pop out of there. And Donnell Leo Mitty does a great job picking it up and getting down the sideline. You're going to see somebody come in from the outside there. It's tough to see his number. I think uh, it was actually, Kerry Hicks. Might have been Kerry Hicks. Pops the ball and Donnell Leo Mitty does a great job wrestling the ball up and getting down into the end zone. That's a big play. Anytime you can get a fumble recovery for a 75-yard touchdown, that's pretty good. Donnell Liamidi, the senior out of American Samoa. A preseason All-Big 8 pick. That'll certainly help his candidacy. Absolutely. Especially running 75 yards down there. Doc Kreese and his weight program helped on his last 20 yards of that. <laughs> <laughs> the extra point snap fumbled by the holder. That's Rosga. And the Buffs cannot get off the kick. See here what actually happened on that. Snap comes back. Looks like a good snap. He just bought, just fumbled it around with his hands. And, and uh, fortunately for CU, he hung on to it. In Rosga's defense, it did look a little wobbly. It was wobbling. We're going to get a better look at the, the uh, fumble recovery and strip by CU's defense on Troy Davis. See Troy Davis there obviously disappointed in fumbling that ball. Here's a little bit better angle of it, angle on that. Actually, it looked like Mike Phillips was the one that, that got that ball out of there. So Mike Phillips, that's a great job stripping that ball. Turnovers for defenses are huge, especially when you run, run one back for a touchdown. So Mike Phillips out of Marrero, Louisiana, forces the fumble. Don Eliamidi runs it in from 75 yards back. There's Mr. Phillips. Now he's got a forced fumble to go with his one interception this year. Getting pat, patted on the back for that one, I'm sure. Did you notice a few seconds ago Rick Neuheisel talking to Vostorici and telling him, even if there's a bad snap, you still have to kick through the ball, and at least that'll buy your holders some time to maybe pick up that ball and find somebody in the end zone and get two points out of it instead of one. The snap did come back bad, but... In Rosgood's defense, he did get the ball up. And, you know, one thing about, like, Jason Elam from the Broncos is he'll stay with it. He's very, very focused. He'll stay with it. And I think Rick was just telling him, listen, you got to stay with it. Make sure you try to get it through the uprights. If not, you know, that's okay. Well, you were a holder for many years in college and then in the pros with Detroit and with Denver. What are you told when you cannot handle the snap, when you can't get it down, and the kicker is not going to be able to get the kick off? We usually get a fire situation. They call fire, which means he'll reel a roll out left or roll out right. When you say fire, your, your tight end and your up and your uh, two wing backs will run some kind of pattern, and you may throw it to him in the end zone and get two points out. So you immediately come up. With immediately the ball. come up, yes. If you bobble it, if, you, if there's a little bit of a bobble, you can still get it down and he can kick it through because you want to try to get your extra point. That's that's a little bit better than taking the chance of running out there and throwing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Arnold with the kickoff return. 
This ball will be placed at about the 29-yard line. Well, coming up at halftime, Mark McIntosh will have a live interview with Coach Rick Neuheisel and hear Rick's thoughts about the first half. Mark also will talk live with Coy Detmer, the CU quarterback, sidelined for the year because of an injury. And then Dirk Martin has the story of some innovative programs at CU that helped to open the formerly male-dominated world of science to everyone. Plus, we'll have all the highlights and stats from the first half. First down for Iowa State, they're at their own 34-yard line, and they're down 27 to 10, so you know they have to go to the air. And Doc, excuse me, Bandauer does in a big way. That ball almost intercepted by CU's Kenny Wilkins. He kind of threw that ball up for grabs. There was a whole lot of white shirts down there getting ready to pick that one off. It was like that 500 drill, you know, when you're in the pool and you're throwing the ball and you're trying to get to 500. One bounce, you get 75 points. Yes. Two bounces, you get 50. That well, game? It depends on the rules, though. I mean, the rules <laughs> seem to change halfway through the game for some reason. It depends on what part of the country you grew up, too. That's right. He, they had some good pressure up front. You see, good hit there by Nick Ziegler. That's the kind of hit that the quarterback starts to remember. You know, you, you get back in that pocket, and you're thinking, where is this guy coming from? Especially when you're a freshman, you remember that stuff. That's right. Bandauer's pass was tipped, but eventually <laughs> caught by Tim Radke, one of the wide receivers. We don't see all that often for Iowa State. That's only his third catch of the year. I think On the coverage was Ryan Black. Yeah, I think CU may have had a little bit of a busted coverage because Radke came wide open across the middle here. You'll see him come wide open, a little crossing pattern underneath. Uh, the ref stays in the way. And it went off the head of Nick Ziegler. The ball bounced off his helmet and skidded off right into the wide receiver's hands. Bandauer looking for Ed Williams on the sideline. They say it's complete. Still about six yards short of the first down. And Iowa State calls another timeout using the second of its three timeouts. So we're going to take a little bit of a better look here. Slowing down. I'm going to run a little hitch route about five or six yards out. Sit down. And, oh, I think he may have trapped that ball right there. That's real, real close. Hard to sell for that angle. That's a tough one to see. It really depends on where the ref is positioned, if he can see it, if he can't see it. But, uh... Right It'd be interesting to see if they could show that again, but I don't think we have an angle of that. We've got 23 seconds to go in the first half. Iowa State close to midfield. Trying to get at least three more on the board before they head for the locker room. CU has had a wonderful second quarter. They came into it tied at seven. They've put up 20 points this quarter. Well, they've definitely come out and established themselves offensively. Yeah, you know, that's been the mark of Iowa State all year also. They've been very, very strong in the opening frame, and then they gradually wear down second, third, fourth quarter. Bandauer. The pass is incomplete to a wide-open Tom Radke. I'll tell you what, if he caught that pass, he gets in the field goal range for Iowa State. Yes, he does. Unfortunately, he didn't catch that, but CU had great pressure up the middle. They put great pressure on Bandauer, the quarterback. See Jones coming through there. And he looked, you know, actually he was still going through his reads, getting that pressure, and he, he just can't hang on to that football. There wasn't anybody within 15 you yards. A better look at he the, catches that. Yeah, you see a better look at the pressure coming through here. In, in, in Bandauer's defense, he does a great job staying in there and getting rid of that ball. That was almost a big play for Iowa State. This is a big kid. He's 6'4", 215. He can see over that defensive line. He played defensive end in high school. That's how big he is. Good rush again, and this time Bandauer eats it. Bandauer is back. Daryl Price, one of the buffs in there. He'll get credit for the sack. Also putting the pressure on, Greg Jones. Daryl Price and Greg Jones, great pressure up the middle. You know, in the last four or five plays, CU's put a lot of pressure on Bandauer. That time they squirted through there and got a sack. You see a little bit better angle of that here. They're in shotgun, so he's going to take a little bit deeper drop, take a look at his coverage. CU does a great job pushing, keeping going, staying with it. That's a winning effort right there. Greg Jones and Daryl Price, those are two solid, solid defensive players for CU. Seven seconds to go in the half. 
Iowa State now pushed back to its own 36. They do have the wind with them, but they'll talk about it on the sideline, whether or not they want to put the knee down and end the half or try and go deep. What would you do here? I don't know. Oh, seven seconds left. You really have nothing to lose, but you also don't want to do something stupid and get intercepted and run back for a touchdown. So in other words, you, call. you feel very strongly both ways. I feel extremely strong both ways. Way to sit on the fence, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. I'm leaning neither way right now. <laughs> I play it conservatively, and I uh, I take a knee. They bring out the punting unit. Why take the chance here? Well, I think, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a good situation for CU. What Rosga can do is he can just let the ball go. Just let it go. Because CU has the opportunity to come out and take a knee. So they can punt it, try to put CU in bad field position. Rosga doesn't even need to catch this ball. He probably shouldn't catch this ball because if he muffs it, then you'll see, yeah, you see him, see him let it go. If he muffs that ball, Iowa State has a chance to get it. Exactly what he did. Ball goes into the end zone for a touchback, and that is the end of the first half. With CU coming on strong in the second quarter, the Buffs leading Iowa State 27 to 10. Hang with us here for a few seconds. Our Mark McIntosh has Rick Neuheisel right now. Mac? Thank you very much, Les. Uh, the uh, turnover for the touchdown, a big lift for you guys there in the second quarter. Well, absolutely. Uh, we're even now in those turnovers. We turned one over early in the game. And what happens after you've lost a ball game is you've got a lot of, we've got a lot of young players. Our confidence is, is, wasn't back, you know. We tried to come out and play really aggressively, but there's a little you know, wondering about where we're at. But I'm, I'm proud of the way we've responded, and we need to come out and play a great second half we get our confidence level right where it needs to be. All right. Coach Rick Neuheisel, brief but to the point. And his team really early in the ball game wasn't as emotional maybe as he would have liked them been. Not that fired up, but they hung in there and got some breaks in the second quarter, put 20 points on the board in the second quarter, and they lead comfortably here at halftime by 17. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. We're going to take a break here at Cyclone Stadium also. We're at halftime. The Buffs up by 17. Welcome to Burger King. Hey, Sonny, what's going on? Hey, Rick, let me buy you lunch, buddy. Ah, you don't have to do that. How about one of those college football combo meals? Hey, a delicious flame-broiled Whopper sandwich. Or a tender chicken sandwich. Crispy golden fries and an ice-cold drink. Starting at just $2.99. Go ahead and order, Rick. It's my treat. Well, you sure? I insist. Well, if you insist, uh, I'd like 45 Whopper value meals, 45 chicken value meals, 22 of the... How's your gun? Nice door. Garage doors. I love them. I'm the Ankmar door guy. That's a beauty. It's the Ankmar Renaissance 2000. And here comes the legend with a LiftMaster door opener. I can tell it's a LiftMaster by how smooth it operates. Ooh. Obviously not an Ankmar. You probably don't think much about garage doors until you need one. When you do, think Ankmar. The door of choice. Receive a second remote free with any LiftMaster purchase. Ankmar doors. You gotta love them. Can a car that pushes the envelope of design and technology hold the line when it comes to price? Consider the innovative Dodge Stratus. There's an advanced multi-valve engine, dual airbag, air conditioning, cassette stereo. In fact, more standard features than Ford Contour, Nissan Altima, and Honda Accord. More passenger room, too. And Stratus offers one more innovation, better value, and a price starting at just $14,995. Dodge Stratus. It's full of answers. The Rick Neuheisel Show, Sunday nights at 1035. Back in Ames, Iowa, Les Shapiro and Jeff Campbell with you. And, Jeffrey, the concern against Kansas was the Buffs didn't play with enough emotion. Well, they about today? They've definitely come out and showed that they can play with a lot of emotion. The thing that they talked about is they needed to get their confidence level back up. You heard Rick say that right before halftime, and I think that they do have their confidence right where they need it. Second half, with a 17-point lead, you just come out, 
you do it the same way you did it in the first half, or do you show a few other things, hoping Nebraska isn't watching too closely? I think you keep things to a minimum, but you still need to come out and play another 30 minutes of football. You've got to come out and show that you can beat Iowa State and beat Iowa State convincingly. Plus, like you talked about, your confidence level and your trust in one another is something that they've got to get back, and they do have that right now. This CU defense gave up 40 points to Kansas. Everybody was surprised by that. A much better effort this afternoon. They're really doing a good job putting the clamps on the nation's leading rusher, Troy Davis. Yes, they've shut Troy Davis down. He's the guy that you've got to stop if you're going to stop Iowa State. Now, with Doxon out, that's going to throw a little wrench into their offensive, Iowa State's offensive uh, scheme. So, we'll see. You might see Troy Davis get the ball even more the second half. You know, CU is normally a blitzing team with a freshman quarterback in there for Iowa State. Now, a kid that does not have a lot of experience, particularly passing the ball, do you expect them to keep coming? I, they'll probably keep coming up the middle. They seem to be successful coming up the middle. And I think that they're not going to show a lot because of Nebraska next week, but they will try to pressure Bandauer the second half. All right, CU looks like they're getting back on track. Up 27 to 10 here at Jack Trice Field in Ames, Iowa. We'll come back with a whole lot more this halftime. offers on all eclipses, including turbo models. First in its class in reliability. First in its class in economy. First in its class in customer satisfaction. First in its class to work. RTD. With over 9,000 bus stops and 57 park and rides, there's bound to be one near you. Oh, Lucky, please come home. America's finest greyhounds come home at Mile High Greyhound Park. For race days and times, call us at 288-1591. There's no place like home. <laughs> When does a great GMC truck get even better? During the October Accessory Fest, buy any Sierra or Jimmy and get $250 in accessories at no extra charge, like a bed liner. Or make your new truck even better with $250 in accessories, like a trailer hitch or a tonneau cover or running boards or any other accessories at no extra charge. So hurry in and get $250 worth of accessories during the October Accessory Fest at your Colorado GMC truck dealer today. It's halftime in Ames, Iowa. Now, one of the young men who made the trip with the CU Buffs is the quarterback who just had knee surgery, Coy Detmer. And right now on the field, Mark McIntosh has Coy. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. We are joined by Coy Detmer, and I think everybody back in Colorado wants to know how you're doing. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I have just got out of surgery last Monday, but, uh, you know, things are going good. I'm walking now. I don't need crutches anymore, so that's going pretty good. What exactly are you doing rehab-wise? You doing anything yet? Uh, I'm doing a little bit, mainly just trying to get full flexibility back in the knee. I'm trying to get full range of motion going, and then I'll start uh, trying to strengthen the knee. Everybody followed so closely. You know, you got hurt against A&M. You tried to come back, and then, and then the unfortunate uh, situation, you went back to pass against Kansas, and your knee just buckled. Tell us your thoughts as you attempted to try to make a go of it on that torn cartilage, on the torn ligament, excuse me. Well, you know, uh, I, my knee felt normal going into that game, and I had done some practice that week, so everything felt fine, but, uh, you know, got in the game situation, and, uh, you know, my knee just wasn't strong enough to hold up without that ligament, you know, and had I waited two more weeks, the same thing would have happened, you know, it was as strong as it could be, but without that ligament, you know, it just wasn't going to hold up. Yeah, you know, Coach Neuheisel took some heat for allowing you to play, but this was a decision you and your family made you wanted to make it to try it yeah i made the decision on my own you know uh, my parents told me you know you do what you want to do and uh you know i know coach neuheisel took a lot of heat and i appreciate the way he handled that 
and uh, you know it was my decision to play and and uh, I wanted to go out there and, and try and do something but uh, you know it just didn't work out this year. How tough is it to have to sit here and watch? It's pretty tough you know I've looked forward to this season for a long time and uh, to not be able to play this year it's uh, kind of disappointing to me but you know hopefully things will work out for me next year. Do you fully expect to be 100% by the start of drills in the August? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm going to try and do some things during spring ball. You know, I'm going to try and get back as quick as I can and get into things in spring ball. And then, uh, you know, over the summer, I'll try and strengthen it and get it fully 100% by uh, next fall. We were talking about this a little while ago. These kind of ball games are tough, especially coming off a disappointing loss. Yeah, they are. You know, uh, it's hard enough to get excited to play Iowa State, you, you know, even if you are winning. But, uh, you know, especially coming off of a loss, you know, really a, a emotional letdown, you know, to try and get excited to play against Iowa State. You know, it's just really tough on a team, and uh, you know, I'm just excited that, that they've come out and got off to a good start and, you know, put 28 points on the board. I think it'll be important, and New Heisel is probably telling them in the locker room, okay, you got 30 minutes to go. we got to play 30 good minutes of football to get ready for the big test next week. Yeah, it's, that's going to be important, you know, for uh, us to come out and, and get things rolling and, and get sharpened up for next week. You know, uh, that's the big one. And, uh, you know, I think uh, if we win the next the next one against Nebraska, everybody will forget that Nebraska, I mean, that Kansas loss. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can get a win against Nebraska. All right, Coy, thanks for joining us, and best of luck with your rehab. Thank you. Coy Detmer, can you run a 30-yard dash for us or anything, buddy? Uh, no, he's not going to run for us. He's going to walk off. Coy Detmer. Fully expect to be in back and 100% next year and uh, kind of being John Hessler's personal quarterbacks coach here on the sideline while he's recovering from knee surgery. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. As Coy Detmer limps off to the locker room, just a week removed from knee surgery. Injured players don't normally make the trip on the college level, but head coach Rick Neuheisel knows that Coy is very popular with his teammates and serves as an inspiration when he is on the sideline home or away. We'll take another break as the Iowa State Marching Band begins to play. We'll come back to Cyclone Stadium. Life doesn't always treat you right. Make sure you have an HMO that does. Sloan's Lake, healthcare plans for everyday life. Bridgestone is about to change the way you feel about driving on ice. We're at an ice rink to show you a breakthrough in tire technology, the Blizzak Ice Tire. The first winter tire with Bridgestone's patented multi-salt compound designed to bite through snow and stick to ice. In fact, at only 30 miles per hour, a set of Blizzak stops 35 feet shorter than a set of popular all-season radials. Blizzak from Bridgestone. If you're not using them, what's stopping you? Get a free ski pass for Silver Creek when you purchase four Blizzaks by November... My mom says a couple of ounces of antifreeze can kill our dog. Even two tablespoons can be bad for me. So we use an antifreeze that's safer for kids and pets. That's less harmful. My dad says any antifreeze can protect against squeezing and rust. But is it less harmful for me and Jojo? That's what my dad cares about. What about yours? Sierra antifreeze. Because safer is better. This is the place to get the card that gives you the discounts you can use on these days. That puts you here, here, and here. And lets you do this. This is the price of the card you get here. News 4 is where you'll hear about the discounts at not one, but three ski resorts. But this is how long the deal lasts. So get the Ski 3 card today at Front Range Christie Sports. Sponsored by News 4. You know, making the grade in football is pretty simple. Either your team scores more points than the other team, or you lose the game. But in the white male-dominated field of science, making the grade can be a tricky uphill battle for women and ethnic minorities. That's changing at CU, however, where a number of programs are helping to even the playing field of science. Dirk Martin has the story. Kinesiology major Yvonne Montoya is in her second year at CU Boulder. But there was a time when this graduate of Trinidad High School thought she wouldn't make it through her first year of college. 
It was a big adjustment because I went from a school where I graduated with 14 people to a school of 25,000. And that was, that was kind of scary at first. But it wasn't just the size of TU that scared Yvonne. Classes were demanding, and she was required to take lab courses, something she never had to do in high school. It's completely intimidating because um, you come up and there are a lot of people who have done a lot of lab work, and they're going through really fast, and I'm scared to drop something, I'm scared to break something. Instead of breaking under the stress and dropping out of school, Yvonne survived with help from the Minority Arts and Sciences program. Probably the key thing that got me through last year um, was the math. Math is a tutorial program that lends assistance and support to minority students majoring in science. In the nation, we know that students of color tend not to major and persist in science, even if science is their first choice. To help these kids stick with science, math requires that they attend a minimum of three hours of tutoring sessions for each math and science class that they take. So the philosophy is one of academic excellence and student inclusion and diversity. Modeled after the very successful minorities and engineering program, math is also showing great promise with an academic retention rate of over 90 percent. While students like Yvonne are reaping the benefits of retention programs, they're also giving something back to CU. You take it and you go down to just the first resistance. Yvonne volunteers to teach in the CU Hughes Initiative High School Bioscience Program, an outreach program that gives inner city kids a chance to experience real science in a real lab. It really is rewarding to help people so they won't be scared when they come up. What is it about this program that you really like? That you get to do hands-on stuff, like you're, you're doing your own experiment. It's really about to, it's about encouraging kids in science at all range of levels. Since 1989, Julie Graff has helped to expose hundreds of Denver area high school students to the wonders of science. She says one of her toughest jobs is convincing these kids that scientists are not nerds in white coats and frizzy hair. Life! Life, do you hear me? Give my creation life! There's the common notion that scientists are nerds and geeks, and hopefully in introducing these high school students to some real people who are scientists, um, those stereotypical notions are broken down. And that's why Graf says it's important to have college-level students like Yvonne help with the program, someone to show the students that anything is possible. I never realized that Gene Wilder was a CU student. We'll return for more halftime activities from Ames after these messages and a word from the University of Colorado. I think the question I get asked most is, at the end of the show when the music's playing, the anchors are talking to each other, what exactly are they saying? I'm Dan Patrick. I'm Keith Alderman. We'll see you later. He's phony. Do they sell men's clothes so you got that up there? I have got a wedgie like nobody's business right now. Thanks for sharing that. When was the last time your hair actually moved, like 1977? When you put your fingers through it. Wedgie you didn't prevent that gas from coming up, did hey, you? that's the Naga hide rubbing on the chair. Don't make things up, bud. I had to kick your... I don't know what that is in your teeth, but uh, I assume you're saving that for later. fixing up something special from the grill like our caribbean chicken salad with grilled marinated chicken and grilled tuna salad with ranch dressing and spicy pico de gallo so if you like your salads fresh from the farm and hot off the grill chili's grills like no place else the most affordable lexus now comes with a moonroof six disc cd auto changer leather trimmed seats and chrome wheels worthy of a Lexus and with a savings of up to $2,000 you'll laugh all the way to the bank the ES300 luxury value package available while they last at Cooney Lexus and Stevenson Lexus need new tires in a hurry at discount tire company we move fast except when it comes to closing our doors Slide in for a new set of Michelin at Discount Tire Company. Today's game is brought to you by Pizza Hut, by Coors Light, by Dodge, by First Bank, and by Samsonite. A 
Along the Continental Divide, new frontiers are discovered every day. It absolutely blew me away. All my own dreams open-minded. The keen insight. Powerful. It's been a great learning experience. Out west on the new frontier with a buffalo robe, the University of Colorado. CU Buffaloes, ranked ninth in the country, leading the Iowa State Cyclones 27 to 10. We're about set for the second half kickoff, but first, Jeff Campbell, let's take a look at some of those highlights, and there were quite a few big ones. I don't think Rick had this in mind on the way that they wanted to start out the game as far as building their confidence level goes, but Herschel comes through here, doesn't protect the ball, it gets ripped out as soon as he tries to switch arms with it. That's a big turnover for Iowa State which eventually leads to, to a touchdown for him. So that's a big play for Iowa State in, in, on the first series, actually, for CU. Here's the touchdown that it leads to. You see Troy Davis going over the right side, the offensive line doing a great job, and he pretty much goes in the end zone untouched. He's the guy that you need to stop for ISU if you want to win the football game. Then CU counters. They have a couple big plays. They have a big play down the middle to Carruth. It ends with the Troutman touchdown. He's got great leg drive. You notice there he has both hands on the ball. I'm sure that... Ben Gregory had something to say about that one. And then here's Hessler's running ability. This is something that, that he, CU can use as a weapon. Hessler can really run. He makes a great cut up the middle. The downfield blocking by CU's receivers and their, their running backs is outstanding. So he gets about 15 more yards just because of the blocking on those plays. You're going to see Lendon Henry's touchdown, which is going to put CU up 14-10 uh, late in the second quarter. Uh, you'll see great run, great spin move to get away from the defender and into the end zone. We talked a little bit earlier about getting his shoulder square and getting up the middle, and that's exactly what he did on that play. And then here's the fumble. Great play here by CU's defense, ripping that ball out of there, getting it. Donnell Leo Midi is kind of the guy on the spot, picks it up. You see the convoy of white jerseys taking him down the field there. Rosga, Terry Hicks, everybody out there in front, Greg Jones, doing whatever they can to get Donnell in the, in the end zone. And, and uh, those, those plays for CU were big plays in the first half for him. Getting ready for the second half as you take a look at some first half stats. CU dominating in the total yard category about halfway down. 241 yards total to just 139 for Iowa State. A couple other stats I want to throw at you that are fairly significant. As Jeff has told you throughout the telecast, the object of starting to stopping, excuse me, Iowa State is stopping Troy Davis, their fine running back, and so far CU's done a pretty good job of doing that. He has 20 carries for just 70 yards, so three and a half yards a carry for a guy who came in averaging more than six yards a carry. Cool, kicking off. This is Lendon Henry from the goal line. And he is racked up at his own 20. You know, getting to see the, the interview with, with Coy at halftime, you know, Coy is such a class person, and I know he's hurting deep down inside because he's not being able to play this year, but his presence on the sideline, he's their emotional leader. You see John Hessler going in there, and, and you know, John thrives on, on Coy, and they, they work together, and that's really a neat thing. They room together on the road, and they spend a lot of time together, so having Coy on this trip, I'm sure, is helping John Hessler. It was very deflating for this group as a team against Kansas to lose Coy that any, anytime you lose your emotional leader, it's going to be tough for you. But right now, things are getting beyond that. You know, John Hessler is the man. And even John is playing with a lot more confidence than he did. Even those weeks where he was the Big 8 Offensive Player of the Week against Oklahoma and Texas A&M. Well, I'm sure Dave Burton and the training staff, along with Doc Creeks, will do a great job in getting Coy ready to go for next year. And Coy can use what he's got in his mind to help his teammates out this year. Herschel Troutman comes out with a three-yard pickup. That'll bring out second and seven. Speaking of A&M, they lead Baylor in the second quarter. Just before Hessler is hit, he gets rid of the ball, but it falls incomplete. See the wind hold that ball up a little bit. When I got about halfway there, it seemed to change speeds. Hessler gets a little bit of pressure. Iowa State blitzed the corner off the end here. They got good pressure on Hessler. It's kind of hard to see there. You see straight coming in off the corner, and it was tough for Hessler to get that pass off. It was a flutter ball to James Kidd that fell incomplete, and that'll bring up third and seven. 
not only is it tough for for Hessler to throw the ball, but it's also tough for the receivers to catch a ball that's in the wind, because a lot of times a gust will come in there and change the ball about a foot in the air, and it's hard to adjust to it with your hands. Right now, see you throwing against the wind. Another wobbler. And that ball's incomplete. Closest man to it was Mike Linkavich, the safety. There's an injured buff on the field. Chris Naoli looked like he may have re-injured that ankle a little bit. Yeah, he's hurt his teammates calling for help to come from the sideline. I'll tell you, you know, one thing about the one thing about the bye week is as bad as it is to sit out after a loss, it does give your team the opportunity to get some of those nicks that you've had during the week healthy. And I think that especially for Chris Naoli, uh, he had a chance to try to get that ankle healthy, got it twisted around a little bit there and, and may have re-injured it. Now coming into this season. Sporting News ranked him as the second best offensive guard in the nation, but Chris has been fighting injury all year long. And there was a penalty on CU on the play. It'll bring a fourth down, and this is a dangerous situation, Jeff. The ball is at the 12-yard line, and CU is going to punt into the wind. I think that, that CU ought to take a look at what Iowa State did in the first half in the first quarter they ought to try to just drive this punt down in the wind to try to get it as far down the field as they can because if that ball gets hung up in the air chances of it getting up in the air and coming straight down are pretty good and hope for a good bounce oh it's blocked for the fourth time this year a cu punt is blocked and this is a safety so give iowa state two points it looks like they made a, a little bit of a, a wrong read up front. Those guys came scot-free right off the outside. Mitchell really never had a chance to get that ball up. Mitchell did do a great job grabbing that ball. It was kind of a high snap, but you know they're going to get they're going to get some pressure off of their right side here. I just think that they may have missed the blocking assignment. Oh, actually, it came right up the middle. So they had three guys in there actually. So they may have done a, a man count and missed one of the guys. You see him going up to try to get that ball there and really has no time to get the ball off. Fourth punt this year that Andy Mitchell has had blocked, and there was question as to whether Mitchell was getting the ball off soon enough or not, and the CU coaching staff said, no, it's the blocking scheme, and they changed things up for today's game, but evidently to no avail. Yeah, they, uh, evidently they're trying to change things into a man scheme where they picked out a man and blocked him. They may have gone back to the zone, or they may have overloaded something where they got confused up front on who they had to block and the punt did get blocked. Luckily for them, it did go out of the end zone because if it stays in the field of play, they can pick it up and score a touchdown. So Iowa State gets another couple of points to make that score 27 to 12 CU, and CU now has a free kick, as they call it, from its own 20-yard line, and Iowa State will get the ball back. The Buffs have a choice. They can either punt the ball from the 20, or they can kick it off. Well, here's where Jason Leslie can really come into play for CU. He's a big help. He's got a strong leg. He can kick the ball down as far as he can kick it and, and try to put Iowa State in a situation where they need to run it back across the 50. Now, we'll see if he can get it through the wind, keep it low enough, and get it down there far enough where CU can get across the 50-yard line and make a tackle. And once again, trouble again, because they're going against the wind. Yeah, the wind, you know, we've talked about that all day long. It is really blowing out here. The flags up on top of the stadium are sticking straight out. So that ought to tell you that the wind's blowing pretty hard. It will really affect the kicking game as far as field goals, uh, any of that kind of stuff, it will affect. You see the flags right there. It's blowing pretty hard out here right now. And the thing about Iowa State Stadium is there's no closed end. It's open on both ends, so it's not going to swirl. It's going to blow through all day. Now right now, at, at the far end, to your left, they're constructing a, a new $10.5 million athletic facility that should help cut down the wind some. But right now, it's of no help to see you. Leslie kicks the ball down to the 27. This is Jahi Arnold. He's got some room, and he's across midfield down to the CU 47-yard line. And all of a sudden, a CU 17-point lead doesn't seem so safe. Well, special teams, you know, we talked about that a little bit earlier, can be such a vital part of your game. And, you know, to kick a ball into a wind that's blowing that hard, Jason Leslie actually did a great job getting it down there. Iowa State put a great return together and got up the field and across the 50-yard line. So, you know, CU's got to play some great defense right now. In at quarterback, Todd Bandauer, the freshman out of Florida, he replaced Todd Doxson early in the second quarter when Doxson went down with an ankle injury. First down for Iowa State. They start with the ball in CU territory. They give to Troy Davis. He's brought down for a gain of one. Mark McIntosh has something for us. Mark? 
Leslie, uh, you guys are talking about the wind, how it comes whipping down the plains here at Cyclone Stadium. Well, on the north end, starting next year, that wind will be blocked a bit by a facility very similar to the Dow Ward Center at the University of Colorado. They're building a multi-purpose uh, athletic office, weight training, all that kind of stuff on the north end of the stadium. That will be done for next year. Back to you guys. Second and nine for Iowa State. Bandauer. Complete. Almost. <laughs> to the fullback Guggenheim. No, that's one of those balls where you're bobbling it and wondering while you're bobbling it, when is the guy going to come take my head off? And he didn't, you know, Donnell Leomitti really had a shot to take it, but I think he was running up there thinking he might be able to pick that ball off and go for another 75 yards for a touchdown. But as a receiver, when that ball flies out there and you start bobbling it, the more you bobble it, the more you're wondering when you're going to get crushed. He looked like a juggler from the old Ed Sullivan show. Couldn't hold on to it. Brings up third and nine. That reference a little too ancient for you, isn't it, Jeff? <laughs> There's a lot of things that are a little too ancient for me. Bandauer throws the ball right into the ground. And a flag on the field at the line of scrimmage. Holding on Iowa State. Anytime a flag goes down right there, the chances of that being holding are pretty good. I guess the offense. You talk about Fourth concentrating down. and waiting for that ball to come flying in there. You're taught as a receiver, you got to concentrate no matter what's coming at you. And sometimes, you know, you've got the concentration level where you can catch that. And sometimes, for some reason, it pops into your head that there might be somebody coming through to try to cream me. Mark Harris back to punt for Iowa State. He's having a pretty good afternoon, too. He's averaging 47 yards a kick. Rosga calls for the fair catch at his own 10. And that's where CU will start with it, leading 27 to 12. Almost two minutes gone here in the third quarter. You get the Denver Post for just 99 cents a week because you get Sundays free, right? No way. It's got better sports, more color, and it's bigger. Come on, it's because Sunday's free, isn't it? No, it's the only paper with sections we can share, and it's actually there, 6 a.m. Well, I guess you don't care if you get Sunday's free either, then, huh? What, are you nuts? I got it because of the deal. You give me Sunday free, you got me. Come on, folks, that other paper sale price can't even beat this deal. So call 832-3232 and get the Post plus the best price in town. I trained my boy McNeely to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champ, and he did for 89 seconds. He didn't back down from any combinations thrown at him, and he ain't backing down from this one. There's a new stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. Not just cheese, but pepperoni baked right into the crust. So good you'll eat it backwards. Show him, kid. The new one-two combination cheese and pepperoni stuffed crust pizza. Hey, McNeely, how many slices am I holding? Can a car that pushes the envelope of design and technology hold the line when it comes to price? Consider the innovative Dodge Stratus. There's an advanced multi-valve engine, dual airbag, air conditioning, cassette stereo. In fact, more standard features than Ford Contour, Nissan Altima, and Honda Accord. More passenger room, too. And Stratus offers one more innovation, better value, and a price starting at just $14,995. Dodge Stratus. It's full of answers. Rick Neuheisel and the CU Buffs leading Iowa State 27 to 12. CU with the ball at its own 10 yard line. Looking into a stiff wind here at Cyclone Stadium. Two wide receivers in the ball game lined up to Hessler's left. He gets the trout. And Herschel with a gain of about five. Tim Sanders, the linebacker, makes the stop. Troutman can change direction faster actually as good or better than most running backs I've seen. He can come right up into the line of scrimmage, stop, and go the other way. You know, a running back that's like that that I know is Glenn Milburn. He can come right up in the line and stop and get going as fast as he can, you know, at full speed the next step. It's amazing. So far in the day, 74 yards for Herschel and one touchdown run. He had a great game against Kansas, went for 105 yards, one of the few bright spots against the Jayhawks two weeks ago. Here, Troutman does pick up the first down, uh, another gain of five. Working the left side of that line again. 
know, that, that left side, they've been really, really successful over the left side with, with Kyle Smith and Keith Irwin. And a Herschel, if he'd have just broken that last tackle, may have gone a long way. Colorado. It's not going to be as easy to push those Nebraska Cornhuskers around next week. No, it'll be a it'll be a challenge, and you know the offensive and defensive lines will have their work cut out for them on both sides of the ball for Nebraska and for CU. It'll be a battle up front. Now that's what makes Nebraska's running game so good. It's not the fact they have kids like Lawrence Phillips back there, although he's suspended. They have 300 pounders lined up from left tackle to right tackle. Yeah, without those guys up front, your running backs and everybody else really has nowhere to go. Troutman had another slip there, trying to make a, a cut back, uh, you know, trying to get back up in the middle, and that there's a, there's the turf we were talking about again. You're going to see Herschel come up into the line of scrimmage, going over the left side again. He's going to try to make a little cut right there and just loses his feet. You see the paint right there we were talking about earlier. His foot landed right on the line, and it just seemed to come right out from underneath him. On second and ten, the option. Hessler keeps, hits quickly. That was Rudy Ruffalo making the stop from his outside linebacker position. Good and the, pursuit. And the fans out here are chanting Rudy, Rudy. So, you know, this is a great play by Ruffalo. Coming down, he's pursuing, good pursuing defense. That's what you want out of your defense. To see him come into the picture and make a great tackle on Hessler there for a loss. That'll bring up third and ten. Two wide receivers in. Hessler, the swing pass to Trotman. He is well covered. Gets nowhere. In fact, he's thrown for a three-yard loss, and there is a penalty flag down. Jason Poots makes the tackle. That penalty is going to be something that's downfield. I'm not really sure what it is, but it didn't happen up front. It happened downfield. Let's see what the referee, Hal Dowden, has to say. Disregard the play. The ball was completed behind the line. There is no foul. flag. There is no penalty on the play. That'll bring up fourth down for CU. And once again, punting into the wind. Yeah, this is going to be a gut check for the punt team. They got to make sure they don't make any mistakes up front. They got to give Andy Mitchell time to get the ball off and see if Andy can drive this ball into the wind, try to get some distance out of it. Andy Mitchell, who had his last punt blocked for a safety. This is Kevin Wilson. Wilson, a freshman out of Ohio, a good athlete. That one almost blocked, too. Another bad punt goes out of bounds at the CU 34-yard line. I think Andy's a little rattled back there. You can see him coming up and probably going to start talking to some of his guys up front. He's a little rattled, and, uh, you know, rightly so. He's had some people in his face the last two times he's punted. You get a better angle, take a look at what's coming in his face. You'll see the guy come off the left side right there and almost block that punt, too. So as a punter, you know, you, you, want, you don't want people around your legs too much. You want to be able to get the ball off clean, and he almost got that ball. That's the second one he's put off the side of his foot today besides the block punt, which really wasn't his fault. Dallin Anderson getting in there doing a great job special teams-wise trying to block the punt. And no matter who's to blame on these special teams problems, it's up to the CU defense now to stop Bandauer in the Cyclones. And right now, they got a sack. A lot of pressure up front. I think one of the big differences today is, is CU's defensive line is doing a great job putting offensive pressure on their, on their offense. Kerry Hicks and Greg Jones squirting through there, getting a sack. They're not giving uh, uh, ISU's quarterback, Todd Bandauer, a lot of time to throw the ball. He stepped up in the pocket, and CU made the sack. Herschel Trotman for CU has 80 yards on the day. He's a little bit ahead of the nation's leading rusher, Troy Davis, right there, who has 72 yards. Second and 11 for Iowa State. Bandauer throws short to the tight end. Excuse me, that's the wide receiver, Horacek. He's down to the 30-yard line. T.J. Cunningham on the coverage. That's an interesting play. What they'll do is they'll line two receivers up wide or they may only run one wide receiver wide. They'll run the inside guy on a flat route and let the outside guy try to run a pick on the inside safety, which will open up the hole for him. And CU does a great job. T.J. Cunningham and Steve Rosga getting in there making a tackle because those are the plays that can go for big yardage. 
Is that type of pick a legal play? Because I know there are some picks that aren't. There, it is a, an illegal play if the ball has not been thrown yet. But if the ball's thrown, it just turns into a block, actually. Third and six. Incomplete. Tom Radke, the intended receiver, he could have gone a ways before being stopped there if he caught him. Talking about pick plays, they almost did the same thing again. They're going to cross the two tight ends and receivers in the middle, kind of confuse the linebackers and the defense, and one of the, one of the uh, ISU receivers came wide open. Iowa State going to kick a field goal. Down 27 to 12. You know, Radke's been open on that route three or four different times for ISU. This is a 47-yard kick. Jamie Cole's longest kick on the year so far, just 42 yards. So this would be his longest of the year if he makes it. And he's got it. Jamie Cole puts another three points on the board for Iowa State. But CU still with a 12-point lead. We've got 8.56 to go in the third quarter. Coors Light, please. to think about when you're driving a car. That's why before they designed the i30, Infinity videotaped the eye movements of test drivers. Then they used these videos to help optimize the placement of controls in instruments. So that when you're driving an i30, the road is what you tend to see the most. It's just one of the many features on the i30 that deserves a closer look. Iowa State starting quarterback Todd Doxson on the sidelines and on crutches after spraining an ankle. Todd Bandauer replaced him and just let Iowa State into field goal position. And the score right now, CU leading the Cyclones 27 to 15 and receiving the kickoff. And Herschel Troutman deep in the end zone decides not to run it out, so the Buffs will start with it at their own 20. Losing Doxson's going to hurt Iowa State during the year, I think, but Bandauer has really come in and done a good job off the bench for, for uh, Iowa State. There's Doxson, young man from Omaha, Nebraska. He is done for the day. We haven't gotten an injury report on him yet, so we don't know how serious the, uh, the ankle sprain is. But at least for today, he is finished. CU with the ball comes out in a three wide receiver set. They've been deep in their own territory, this complete half. That time, the pass intended for James Kidd dropped. CU's lost a little bit of their rhythm. They've come out a little bit flat in the second half, and, and you really need to just kind of settle down, get back into their game plan, be confident in what they're doing. They're going to run a little slant route here to the outside. He's going to come wide open in the middle and just loses concentration on the ball and drops it. They've got to get out. Usually of, doesn't do that. Yeah, they've got to get out of the situation where they're backed up to their own goal line, or it's going to come back to haunt them, just like it did on their block punt with safety. Well, if they are backed up, they can't be backed up that far. They've got to give Mitchell some time to punt the ball. Greg Carruth with a nice catch and first down yardage. He's up to his own 34. Hessler had good pressure on him, got rid of the ball just before getting hit. Carruth's the kind of guy that you have to worry about as a defense. He runs 4-2, I believe, in the 40. He's going to come out here and run a little flat route about six yards to the outside. They get the corner turned, makes a great leaping catch. He's going to get square up the field. 
you know, the outside receiver that makes that play, what he does is he makes the cornerback turn outside so he cannot see the inside route. That's what opens that play up. If that outside receiver goes inside, Henry going to do that. that. Lyndon Henry Tim runs Sanders it inside. Picks up three yards. Tim Sanders, the inside linebacker, the stop. Lyndon Henry, they're starting to shuffle their backs around a little bit, give Troutman a little bit of a break. Come back on a little draw action. Makes a couple good moves, getting back to the line of scrimmage, and does what he can to gain some yards. Henry and Troutman pretty much sharing the load today from the running back position. Haven't seen a lot of Marlon Barnes. Second and seven for the Buffs. Another quickie over the middle, Chris Anderson. And another first down to midfield, goes Chris. Chris Anderson's the guy that everybody is uh, comparing to Michael Westbrook. They're kind of built the same. Westbrook actually took Chris Anderson under his wing when he got here as a freshman and kind of taught him the ropes. They're going to run a quick little slant route to the outside. Same play as they ran before. He comes open. Good concentration on the ball. Good concentration by the rest of the receivers doing their routes, doing their job to get him to come open. Anderson out of Laporte, Texas. Picked up the first down. Henry. A couple of yards. Greg Schoen, the nose tackle, makes the tackle. That's great movement by Greg Schoen to get all the way outside to make a tackle on Lyndon Henry. That's good movement by a nose guard. Hessler at 50% on the day, 112 yards, no touchdown passes. But then again, they haven't thrown all that much, especially this half when they've been going against the wind. Although the short stuff is starting to kick in right now. Going to those short routes. This time they run the reverse. This is Kidd. And he clips and falls. He had an opportunity to pick up another five or ten yards there. But went down untouched. Here comes the turf again. You know, CU actually had a lot of running room going to that side. The reverse kind of got crazy back there in the backfield. But they do a good job staying with it. And that turf is just eating up guys on both sides of the ball now for Iowa State and CU. It looked like it took forever to develop. What went wrong there, Jeff? They blitzed the corner off the back side, and you're, that's the guy that can come in and make the tackle, so it kind of threw everything off a little bit. I think Lyndon Henry was thinking he had to block that corner. On third and 13, they try the screen, it's intercepted. Jason Putz. The senior defensive end jumps up and grabs that ball. Big play, big play. Iowa State has had great field position the entire second half so far. Still early in the second half, but they've had great field position. This ball, who knows, it may, uh, you know, that's, kind of, that's a bad pass. He probably should have just looked at that, either thrown the ball out of bounds and not made a bad play, and it got picked off. Not enough lift on that pass, and Putz read it perfectly. He saw the screen developing, kept his ground, and comes away with the interception. And now Iowa State will have the ball at the CU 48-yard line. That's good discipline by Iowa State just to stay in there and, and do what they can to break that play up. Make it the CU 43-yard line. Buffs lead it 27-15 with 6.29 to go third quarter. This is Troy Davis outside. Nine yards on the run. There to stop him was Steve Rosga. Mike Phillips just got held and they didn't call it. There's, it was, it, it's tough to see, it'll be tough to see on your screen. They do a great job, you're stringing out Troy Davis and not letting him have any lanes to cut up in. But yeah, you'll see that, that 88 from uh, Iowa State, uh, Mike Horacek, uh, running with his arms in the air. Usually if you're running with your arms in the air as a football player, you know you did something wrong. And you don't want anybody to find out that you did it. Well, Davis, at the end of that run, reached over and got the first down, so call it a pickup of 10. And Iowa State now at the 34-yard line. Davis again, you can feel the momentum shifting to Iowa State's side of the field. And the people running the Troy Davis yardometer meter are fumbling around with the numbers up there trying to get them to the right number. Well, that interception thrown by CU, pretty unusual under Rick Neuheisel's tutelage. They've only thrown eight interceptions in 478 attempts since Neuheisel took over last year as the quarterback's coach and 
this year as the head coach. Pickup of six on that last run for Davis brings up second and four. Davis again. A great cutback will get him into the end zone. State. Gonna go over the left side. You know, the momentum is starting to switch here a little bit in Iowa State's favor. Offensive line, great job. A couple of good cutbacks right there, breaking a couple tackles. That's why Troy Davis is leading the country in rushing right now. You can see with all that's happened, Iowa State's way this quarter. They felt they could keep it on the ground, keep picking up five and ten here and there, and now Davis breaks one for the touchdown. He's their bread and butter, and that's who they go to when things are going well. The thing about Troy Davis is he's going to break a couple of big runs during the game. He's just that type of back. Line drive does go through the goalpost for the extra point, and all of a sudden, we have a ball game once again. CU's lead, now just five points. I trained my boy McNeely to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champ. And he did for 89 seconds. He didn't back down from any combinations thrown at him. And he ain't backing down from this one. There's a new stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. Not just cheese, but pepperoni baked right into the crust. So good you'll eat it backwards. Show him, kid. The new one-two combination cheese and pepperoni stuffed crust pizza. Hey, McNeely, how many slices am I holding? Can a car that pushes the envelope of design and technology hold the line when it comes to price? Consider the innovative Dodge Stratus. There's an advanced multi-valve engine, dual airbags, air conditioning, cassette stereo. In fact, more standard features than Ford Contour, Nissan Altima, and Honda Accord. More passenger room, too. And Stratus offers one more innovation, better value, and a price starting at just $14,995. Dodge Stratus. It's full of answers. Here he is, late again. Hi, gang. Sorry I'm late. Had to get money at the bank clear across town. Why don't you bank at First Bank? Then you can stop at any First Bank to get money. They have locations all over the place. Yeah, I went to First Bank and got free checking for a full year. I got my loan there with no problem. Really? Sounds like I need to go to First Bank. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> First Bank, Colorado Bank for you. Equal housing lenders. Well, there's a look at the Troy Davis yardometer or yardometer, however you want to pronounce it. If you're sitting behind the yardometer, do you think that you can see the game with them standing up all game like that? <laughs> that young man has 124 yards on the ground so far today, and that last touchdown brought the Cyclones to within five points of CU. They kick off, and it'll be a touchback. Buffs will start with it at their 20. Troy Davis leading the country in rushing. This is why he leads the country in rushing. Number one, he's got a great offensive line. And number two, he's got great cutback ability and some speed to go along with that ability. Young man came out of nowhere. Had just 35 carries last year as a backup. He did have a 99-yard touchdown return on a kickoff against CU. But other than that, didn't make much of a mark. This year, however, everybody in the nation knows who he is. And a couple more days like today, a couple more days like he's had so far this year, and he will be considered one of the top Heisman Trophy candidates. First down for the Buffs. Lyndon Henry breaks through the middle. A gain of 16. Lyndon Henry, that's hard, tough running right there. Lyndon Henry wants to get this momentum of the game that's switched to Iowa State right now back in CU's favor. You're going to see him going over the right side of the line over Stoltenberg. Stoltenberg makes a great block along with Naoli. Gets up in there. And uh, Jason Brown, along with Mike Lincavage, does a great job making the tackle. But hard running there by Lyndon Henry. They need to get Iowa State's momentum switched to their side. They give to Henry again. Reads the hole nicely again. And he's upended at the 49-yard line, his own 49. Lyndon Henry, they're going to give the ball to him. He's hot right now. You want to give it to the guy that's hot. It's just like playing basketball. He goes over the right side, and Naoli pulls, makes a great job, of, makes a good block on the linebacker, squares his shoulders, puts his head down, and Iowa State makes a good hit right there. Both Troutman and Henry 
for as young as they are, do a good job reading where the holes are, don't they? Yes. Mike Linkavich is going to get real tired of hitting somebody that's that big running at him that fast. London Henry is six foot, 190 pounds. Very solid. And another first down for CU. Henry again, dancing his way across midfield. Down to the Iowa State 48. Matt straight to tackle. Iowa State brought the corner off the side that time to try to come in and, and, uh, and make a play. He comes, good cut back right there, tries to find the hole. Here comes the corner, makes the tackle. Gets hit right in the side. Took a helmet to the thigh. And Henry comes out with a little hitch in his giddy up. A little bit better angle of it here. You see him coming through there. There's the helmet on the thigh. Those are the kinds that don't, don't really bother you until after the game. But once you sit down on the bus for a couple hours, getting back up out of that seat's a little rough duty. He picked up eight yards, so it's second and two. Drop and tries to twirl away from the pack, but he's thrown for a loss of a yard by Greg Schoen. This is going to be a big third down situation for Colorado right now. They need to convert this third down, keep their drive alive, get their confidence levels back up, and keep the momentum going their way. Iowa State's had the momentum uh, for a little while right now. This is a great job by Iowa State's defense on stacking up Ursula Troutman. That's the nose guard, Greg Schoon, doing a good job stacking him up, making a tackle for a loss. You know, if nothing else, if you're looking for small victories, Jeff, they've gotten the, the ball out of their own territory. Might, yeah, that's, cha might change the battle for field position. That's there. big right now. Herschel Troutman, does he have the first down? Looks like he's got it to me. I would agree with that. Right. Herschel Troutman, for being as small as he is and as compact as he has got his shoulders low, kept his leg drive going, and I really think that he got the first down. Yes, he did. Troutman and Henry leading the way downfield. See you keeping it on the ground as long as they're going into the stiff wind. I think one thing you need to keep in mind is they need to get down far enough where they have a good shot at a field goal if they're not going to score because they are going into the wind right now. First down at the Iowa State 40. Hesler trying to go deep. Puts it up there for Phil Savoy, but Phil cannot come down with it. Dewan Anderson was right there with him. Hessler had a whole bunch of time to throw that ball, and he's kind of looking confused like somebody may have done something wrong. Or, on the other hand, he might be thinking that, you know, I may have, should have not have thrown that ball. But that's an... Oh, Phil Savoy almost caught that ball. That's a great effort going up and trying to get it. And a pretty good pass considering the elements. Yes, he threw that ball a long way into a pretty stiff win. Second and ten for the Buffs. They lead by five. We have a little less than two and a half minutes to go in the third. Landon Henry stacked up quickly. The first red jersey to hit him, Michael Cooper. Michael Cooper, he's a walk-on. Michael Cooper, I'm kind of partial to walk-ons, but, you know, he's a walk-on. They've got a great tandem of linebackers in Michael Cooper and Tim Sanders. You see him coming off the edge, making a great textbook tackle. Face mask right in the chest. Michael Cooper and Tim Sanders combine for an average of 22.2 tackles per game together. Yeah, and you know, Cooper's not even here on an athletic scholarship. He's on an academic scholarship as a walk-on. Sure. Third and 13. Hessler with time, looking for somebody. Throws the ball into the ground. The pass intended for Ray Carruth. Good coverage by the ISU defensive backs there. Good coverage by ISU's defensive back. Good, good uh, uh, up front blocking by CU's offensive line. What that is, is that's a coverage that was covered. They did a great job. Iowa State's defensive backs covered the route. Hessler, really the only thing that he could do was throw this ball in the dirt. I really don't think that he had anybody open. You see him scrambling around, trying to find somebody. There really wasn't anybody open, so he just threw it in the dirt. Andy Mitchell the punt. He's had a rough afternoon. And punting into the wind. That is the third punt that has gone off the side of Andy Mitchell's foot. Lucky for CU that the, the punt didn't go very far, but he got a good roll out of it, and it put him inside the 20. But, uh, you know, that's, that's scary. That's, that's scary right now. Ball at the Iowa State 14-yard line as the Cyclones take over. Hey, Gary Miller and News 4 Sports continue an exciting season on Broncos Beat tonight at 6.30 and a repeat at 11.05.
Now, that's a show, if you're a Bronco fan, you don't want to miss because it's the only Bronco show that looks ahead to tomorrow's game against the first-place Kansas City Chiefs. It's all on Broncos Beat tonight at 6.30 and then again at 11.05. And it's all right here on News 4, your home for the Buffs and the Denver Broncos. This is Troy Davis for Iowa State. Troy Davis is the type of guy that you can't let get into a rhythm. You've got to plug him up in the, in the line, not let him get some yards, try to frustrate him a little bit. And right now, he's doing a good job getting down the field. He has a good rhythm going. That whole Iowa State offense does. This is a very close ball game if you're just joining us. CU had a 17-point lead at the half, 27 to 10. But Iowa State has answered the bell. It is 27-22 now as we approach the last minute of the third quarter. Van Dower, the freshman, is the quarterback. He replaces the injured Todd Doxson. Davis, Davis again. That's the kind of defense that CU needs to do. They gotta, they gotta contain Davis to two and three yard gains. You know, he, he probably got the first down there, but the thing is, is they've gotta contain him to that. They can't let him get outside and make a big gain on him. They've gotta contain him. Time out on the field. We're going to measure for a first down. You know, that CU defense has done pretty well against the rush all year long. They're giving up just 113 yards a game on the ground, but already Davis has gone well over that. Well, Davis, you know, he's going to get his yards. You know, he's, he's right now he's leading, you know, they got a first down there. He's leading the nation in rushing. He's putting yards up like Barry Sanders did in Barry Sanders' junior year at Oklahoma State. So he is the real deal as far as running backs go. Hey, he already has two games over 290 yards this year. That's in each individual game, 290 yards. That's a lot of yards yeah. for a running back. The only man ever to do that at least twice in Big 8 history was Barry Sanders. And he's only a sophomore. Well, you played with Barry Sanders. Was he the best you ever saw? Barry is the best running back I've ever been around in my life. He does things that are impossible, pretty much. Davis again on first down. Got about three. Let's go down to the field and mark. Yeah, last year, you were talking earlier about the fact that Davis only carried the ball about 35 times last year, and a lot of Iowa State fans wondering why that was. Jim Walden just did not use him. He was a highly touted, recruited player out of Florida, but last year, he only carried the ball 35 times. There's a lot of people around here saying, why didn't you redshirt him last year instead of just restricting him to about 35 carries? He'd be a redshirt freshman this year and leading the nation in rushing. Back up to you guys. Well, they don't have a lot to complain about. This is Davis's sophomore year, so he'll have another couple of years after this. Bandauer with good pressure, finally brought down with a flag on the field. I think it was Ryan Olson getting to him first. Ryan Olson put some good pressure up the middle, and then a host of CU players went and jumped on, so they had a lot of good push, plus the holding penalty for Iowa State. They'll probably take the sack, but not the penalty, depending on where they spot the ball. That is the end of the third quarter. We've got a tight one. Dan McCartney trying to rally his Iowa State troops. They're down by just five, and we'll come right back for the final stanza. They don't pretend to be heroes. We don't play God. We play God with every decision we make. They are only human. I'm just not used to having patients die on me. You never get used to it. But when things are at their very worst, He's going into shock. That boy's gonna die. He'll do it now. They are at their very best. I don't cut his leg out. He died. There's another baby. A baby we can save. Experience the power of hope. The hospital should have a conscience. Chicago Hope. Mondays on CBS. This is the place to get the card that gives you the discounts you can use on these days. That puts you here, here, and here. And lets you do this. This is the price of the cards you get here. News 4 is where you'll hear about the discounts at not one, but three ski resorts. But this is how long the deal lasts. So get the Ski 3 card today at Front Range Christie Sports. Sponsored by News 4. Bender, Bender? No problem. Just call the uh-oh, better get Mako guy. Get our great Mako presidential finish, plus four hours of body labor. Get it done fast and right. Now only $349. That's Mako value. Mako, America's smart choice. 
Today's game is brought to you by Blackjack Pizza, by your Front Range Jeep and Eagle dealers, by Midas, and by Ankmar Door. Les Shapiro and Jeff Campbell back with you at Cyclone Stadium in Ames, Iowa, where CU finds itself in a ball game. We're starting the final quarter. The Buffs lead the unranked Iowa State Cyclones 27 to 22. The Iowa State women's difference in the second half. Troy Davis. He's really done a lot better, I think, in the second half as far as putting together some runs than he did in the first half. And let's not discount field position. Field position found itself going against the wind all quarter, deep in its own territory, and just couldn't get anything going. That's two. Here you see a big time upset. Northwestern over Wisconsin. Actually, I think no, Wisconsin. Yeah, do you call that an upset? Wisconsin was favored in the game. Even though Northwestern is ranked 11th in the country, the Badgers were favored. Well, now maybe people will be believers in Northwestern and head coach Gary Barnett, the former CU assistant. Bandauer throwing to the sideline. A nice catch by Ed Williams. Great catch. Also great position by Cunningham. Ed Williams outstanding concentration shotgun formation gives the quarterback a little bit more time to see the field great running good great back by the running back blocked by the running back and, and an outstanding catch by ed williams because he had cunningham draped all over him ed williams that's a lot of wide receiver right there six foot three he's much bigger than tj cunningham and was able to get those long arms out and snatch that ball and a first down for iowa state at its own 35. Troy Davis, escapes Matt Russell, who had a chance to throw him for a loss, and Davis ends up picking up eight yards. Well, it's going to be important that CU's defense puts together a couple stops right now on Iowa State's offense. Troy Davis getting the handoff here. Matt Russell, good job getting through there, just can't hang on to him, and Troy Davis turns the corner and turns on the speed. We were talking about Ed Williams a little earlier talked to some people from Iowa State and they said that Ed Williams was a quarterback in high school and now he's a receiver and he enjoys playing receiver much more because he doesn't feel the pressure of being a quarterback. Second down for Iowa State. Davis again. Davis picks up the first down. And finally gang tackled at midfield. Donnell Liamidi, the first buff to hit him. Iowa State's powerful offensive line right now is starting to take over CU's defensive line to go behind their big center right there. Get up the middle and a good tackle by Rosga and Leo Midi to stop the run. Now, Jeff, there's been a lot of talk the last couple of weeks, especially from head coach Rick Neuheisel, that the Buffs can still be ranked number one by the end of this year. They can at least get to the Fiesta Bowl and play for that number one ranking. How important was it to get an impressive win against Iowa State today? Not just a win, but an impressive win. Uh, I don't think it, you need to have an impressive win. I think that you need to come out and definitely win. Right now, they're involved in a pretty good ball game, and they need to get the momentum switched back to their side. But, uh, you know, I think that what they're going to try to do is, yes, they are hungry. Yes, they are trying to get their confidence back. But they've got to look at the game they're playing right now. Now, you're going to see the versatility of a running back like Davis. He puts a great block on Nick Ziegler from CU. Uh, that's a total running back. That's the kind of running back that you want. He can do everything you want him to do. After the completion to Horacek, it's second and five for the Cyclones. They're down to the CU 45 yard line. Big hole for Davis. He's going all the way again. Well, offensively right now, Iowa State is rolling. They've got the crowd behind them. They've got momentum. CU's kind of down. they got guys walking around shaking their heads a little bit. Troy Davis is doing what Troy Davis does every week, and that's make big plays. He pretty much is Iowa State's offense, and he's doing it right now. They're going to go for two, because right now they have a one-point lead. If they kick the extra point and make it a two-point lead, it doesn't mean anything. If they go for the two-pointer, then they're a field goal ahead. I'll tell you the truth coming in, Jeff. I wasn't convinced that this kid was for real. He racked up a lot of yards against teams the likes of UNLV and Ohio University, not exactly powerhouses. 
and struggled against a good rushing defense like Oklahoma's. But today, he's shown me. Penalty flag goes. I believe this is going to be against Iowa State. You know, you're talking about Troy Davis only running for 89 yards against Oklahoma a couple weeks ago. He's come out today and has just done a phenomenal job running the ball. So he is as good as everybody says he is. The replay of that. Bonhauer is a little bit uh, quick in his movement. He may have forgot the snap count on the way up. And uh, that's your illegal procedure. Well, Troy Davis, as we start the fourth quarter, already has 188 yards rushing. More than half of that has come here, well more than half has come here in the second half. Iowa State going for two. Hits from behind, he still tries to get rid of the ball, and they'll call that pass incomplete. So I'm not it was Daryl Price who nailed Bandauer before he got rid of that ball. So Iowa State with a one-point lead, 28-27, early in the fourth. The new Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo offers full-time four-wheel drive to handle rough terrain. Improved quadricoil suspension for a smooth, controlled ride. The most powerful V8 in its class. And with up to $1,000 in option package values, it's designed with your budget in mind. But wouldn't you know it? Just when driving starts to get fun. Someone comes along and ruins it. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Dear Midas, my wife's brake light had been flashing on, so we took the car to a repair shop. They failed to properly inspect the brakes and solve the problem. Then we took the car to Midas, rested a proper inspection, and told me... Well, your brake pads are worn. Tell your master cylinder to use more brake fluid, in turn causing your light to go on. Then I got new pads and a guarantee. I should complain to that repair shop, but I wanted to congratulate you instead. Thank you. Dave Buchanan. Appetite comes with the territory. Out here, people demand good food, and they know just where to get it. On the border. Things are better on the border. Iowa State getting set to kick off after taking the lead over CU, 28-27. After the kickoff, we'll show you that Troy Davis touchdown run. It was impressive. A squibber. And on the return, Brandon Southward. Andre Lee makes the tackle. For Andre Lee makes the stop. A little bit different angle here. You see a big, huge hole in the offensive for the offensive line to do uh, against the U's defensive line. And Troy Davis is just nothing but speed into the end zone. You got to give a lot of credit to Iowa State's offensive line for putting that big of a hole uh, for him to run through. Nine plays, 86 yards. It didn't take very long. See you with the ball at its own 34. John Hester still in a quarterback. Langdon Henry. Spins his way across the 35, up to the 37. Iowa State keeps working that left cornerback into the picture. Uh, he keeps coming in. Lendon Henry coming through. Matt Strait keeps coming off the side and ends up making the tackle. Lendon Henry, great spin move to get away. Here comes Strait in to make the tackle. He's the guy that puts a helmet in Lendon Henry's thigh and uh, sent him out for a play about 10 plays ago. Henry okay though, still in the ball game, second and six. Good pass, this is Carruth, gets away. He's got great speed and he's in ISU territory. Down to the Cyclones 36, call it the 37. He's a game breaker, Ray Carruth can break a game for you. He can get out in the open and do a lot of damage because of his speed. You see Hessler drop back. Great catch, by, makes a, it's a great route by Carruth. He gets outside, gets a block, and gets down the sideline. Now, CU needs to make another couple of big plays down here to get back in the lead. Play. 
First down for the Buffs. Lyndon Henry inside the 35. Pick up a four. Lyndon Henry, a big back, a big, powerful, strong back. You may see him a little bit more in this second half while he goes out and, and, and does a great job running. He's in a rhythm. He's punishing guys when they try to tackle him, so he, you may see a lot more of him in the second half. Pretty talented kid. He can run it. He's a good blocker. He's got good hands. He can catch the ball. Plus, he can sing. Kind of like you. Well, you're singing on the break. You sounded pretty good. And then Henry again. Didn't see anything on the right side, so he kept it down the middle. And gets it to the 30. Michael Cooper, the linebacker, with the tackle. Cooper and Sanders, the two linebackers for Iowa State, in on the stop. Doing a great job. We talked about them a little bit earlier. Tim Sanders has had 11 stops in last year's contest against CU. He had 11 tackles. That's a good day for a linebacker. CU so far on the day, three, excuse me, 5 for 10 on third down conversions. It's third and four right now. Bill Savoy grabs it and goes down and has the first down. Bill was making sure in the win that he looked that ball in and concentrated on catching that football. That's a great job by Savoy. They run a little slant route to the outside. They, it works because they clear the inside safety out with an inside receiver. Savoy takes his time on the slant route and comes wide open. Good pass, good catch. First down. Iowa State leads 28-27. 11.45 to go in the final quarter. Hessler wants to throw. Over the middle, wide open, Lutzis. Is he in? No signal yet. No, they're saying he's about a half a yard short of the goal line. Third down conversions are so important. You see Savoy with a, with a great third down catch to get the first down. Hessler gets great time. His offensive line doing a great job holding up Iowa State's defensive line. Lepsis gets open, finds a little window. Hessler gets him the ball, and they get down to the one-yard line. Great play. First and goal from the one. The Buffs looking to retake the lead. It's been back and forth all afternoon. Lendon Henry is in. Touchdown, see you. Lendon Henry wanted that touchdown because he took a couple of great licks by Iowa State defenders and still got in the end zone. It was Michael Cooper and Tim Sanders trying to keep him out of there. Here comes Lendon Henry. He'll be right at us. This is what the tacklers are seeing. You get him wide, but he's gonna. he listened to what his coach had to say in the first half squares his shoulders and gets into the end zone. Henry's third touchdown run. He also has 99 yards cumulative. All right, we're going for two. Let's go! Say he actually slipped trying to make the cutback and almost lost his feet. It seems like all everybody is running towards CU's bench is sliding. When they're running towards Iowa State's bench, they're not sliding as much. And going for the two-point conversion. Incomplete. A little low. And Savoy couldn't hold on. Got the ball that Savoy knows that if he could have all over again, he would have caught. Well, he's not going to get that chance. CU, however, retakes the lead. Garage doors. You don't give them much thought. Unless you're like me, the Ankmar door guy. I love them. Occasionally, your trusty garage door breaks down. That's when you need to call Ankmar Door. Our service people are the best. Doesn't matter if you're fixing a broken spring or replacing a damaged section. Hey, no flat shot. Or installing a brand new door. Ankmar is ready to help. So give us a call. Now, with any service, we see the garage door tune-up absolutely free. Ankmar Doors. You gotta love them! Acura engineers have taken the guesswork out of deciding what's fun and what's not so fun. So we can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Acura Integra is more fun than anything in its class. Now special lease rates are available on the Integra. At Flatirons Acura, Mile High Acura, or Courtesy Acura. The 
silver bullet. It shipped cold to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Tap the Rockies! <laughs> CU trying to rebound from that loss to Kansas last week. It's a little slow going, but the Buffs have the lead against Iowa State with 11-10 to go in the game. You've got to give them some credit. Iowa State made a big play. CU put a long drive together, went down, put it in the end zone, and the, the stands have quieted down a little bit here. They were on fire there for a while. Jason Leslie kicking off. And Iowa State chooses to down the ball in the end zone. That was Kevin Wilson. So Iowa State... Penalty flag is down. Iowa State will have the ball at its own 20, having to go against the wind after CU took the lead. CU was offsides on their kickoff coverage unit. You got some guys a little bit excited to try to get down there and make a play. So they will kick it again. Offside on the kicking team. Five yard penalty. Three kicks. So the ball will be pushed back to the 30, I believe. Although the official just put it down at the 35. <laughs> Let's take a look at that last two-point conversion try. What you do here is you'll put a guy in motion and try to flood the zone. He has some speed. He can work his way into the flat there. Hester really throws a nice ball. It's just a little bit behind him. It would have been a tough catch, but it's a catch that he could have made. Well, now the ball has moved back to the 30 after CU has penalized five yards for being offside. Jason Leslie still with a strong enough leg and the wind behind his back to reach the end zone. It's a little chilly outside. I wonder if his foot's a little sore after kicking that ball. It's kind of like a rock right now. see too many barefooters anymore. No, last barefooter that I saw was Rich Carlin. Yeah. Are there any others in the pros right now? I don't think so. Oh, no, Jahi Arnold from his own six. And still some scuffling going on in the field as Arnold is thrown down at his own 27-yard line. Some of the Iowa State players were going after Jason Leslie, the kicker, you know, considering that Jason's made three tackles inside the 20 as a kicker this year. I'm sure that, that special teams units on kickoff return are going to go after Jason to try to get him to not do that. There's Troy Davis so far this afternoon, 188 yards rushing. That is one yard better than his average, which leads the nation. And on first down, they give to Davis. But he's going nowhere because Donnell Liamidi has a hold of his jersey. Let's take a look at Jason Leslie, as you pointed out, making the tackle on the kickoff. You gotta love a kicker that'll go down there and get in the mix of things. And here comes the Iowa State guys. The best thing to do is just get out of the way. Aha, you missed me. <laughs> you know, it's especially gutsy when you're only wearing one shoe. But you know, all you need is one, one of these 300-pounders, even a 200-pounder, to step on your foot with those cleats. You got a few broken bones in the foot. Second and nine. Van Dauer. Intercepted by Matt Russell. He's going to coast in. Matt Russell, Russell touchdown to you. Matt Russell, you can't say enough about the guy. I mean, he does everything. He'll do anything you want for. If you said, Matt, I want you to go run to the end of the stadium and run through the new complex that they have down here, he'd do it. The concrete you know? wall. Absolutely. He'll do whatever he can to help his football team. Matt Russell drops into a little hook zone here. You'll see him drop out, drop into the middle, keeps his eyes on the quarterback, and the and Bandauer threw it right to him. Matt showing his, his speed here, getting in the end zone, and hey, big, big turnover right now that CU capitalized on. I can't wait to hear Matt's quotes after this one. <laughs> He's always got something to say, good or bad. <laughs> this one certainly after good. And that gives CU a 39-28 lead. They will once again go for the two-point conversion and try and make it 
a 13-point lead instead of a 12-point lead. Those type plays are why he is still in the running for the Butkus Award. He can do everything. Gonna run it this time, Trotman. And he's in. Another two points for the Buffs. The great thing about college football, any type of football, is the momentum can switch so fast. You know, Iowa State had a lot of momentum about five minutes ago, and now CU has all kinds of momentum. So this actually has been a great game to watch. Matt Russell picking off that pass again and sauntering in for the touchdown. We're going to take another look at, at something that's a little action away from the ball that you don't normally see. So we are going to, that might be a hold right there. What do you think, Les? I have no comment, Jeff. <laughs> I know nothing. You know what? It, it's hard to tell because we couldn't see where the ball was. If the ball was in the air already and it wasn't intended for that receiver, Ed Williams, I, do you make the holding call there? Uh, I think you got to make a I think you got to make the holding call. It's, it's so far away from the play, though, it really wouldn't have mattered. I mean, Matt was going to get in the end zone regardless of if TJ would have held him or not. So it's a, hey, TJ got away with it. Great job. Huh? <laughs> a terrible lesson for the youth of America, Jeff. <laughs> if you're not caught, it's okay. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm back up on the fence for that one. <laughs> Boy, and this crowd has quieted down completely. The only people that are standing are the Troy Davis Jardo meter people because they know that they're going to have to start turning the numbers again. See you kicking off with a 13 point lead. We've got 10 19 to go. This is far from over, especially the way Iowa State has been moving the ball on offense. There's the Troy Davis Jardo meter or yardometer <laughs> they've been standing all game they were in a fury there for a while those numbers were smoking because because uh, Troy started running for a lot of yards and he might not be done <laughs> once right. again because of the wind see you having to hold the ball on the tee Troy Davis has 119 yards rushing just this half he has definitely been the difference for Iowa State this half. Leslie bounces it out of the end zone. So Iowa State will start with it as its own 20. Well, he's lived up to everything that everybody's ever said about him, about being a great running back. He can block, he can catch, he can run, he can do everything you want him to do. Out of Miami, Florida, just a sophomore. So every team in the Big 8 and next year the Big 12 will have to contend with him for a couple more years. What do you think the chances of him coming out as a junior are? I don't know. I, I really don't know his personal situation. And you have to take that into account anytime you're talking about a kid leaving school. Or well, you know, the, the juniors that have come into the draft, especially last year, really didn't do very well. But the numbers that he's putting up, you may see him leave in the junior year. Davis with Zoom around the left end. And he's up to the 32-yard line, a pickup of 12. Davis has great speed getting outside. And the thing about Troy that you need to take into mind is he's going to string the play out here, but he's so quick that he can cut up inside if he wants. He does a little move to freeze the linebacker and gets up the sideline. A little first down, about a 10, 13-yard run. Here's the scary part. Davis has a little brother in Florida who has verbally committed to Iowa State. His name's Darren, and he's a running back. Davis again. That's a great gang tackle by CU's defense. And they throw Davis for a loss of a yard. Ron Merkerson sticking his head in there and making a great tackle. Little draw action, almost like a counter action. Gets up in there. Sticks him, does a great job. Actually, Mike Phillips was the first guy to get in there and make a tackle, and they drive him backwards. When you have four or five guys landing on you, that wears on you for a while. But uh, Troy seems to be doing fine right now running the ball. Brings up second and nine. Nine and a half minutes to go, fourth quarter. Bandauer, incomplete, intended for Haracek. 
And just to make sure, T.J. Cunningham came in and gave him a little check. That's the play that they've been running over and over and over during this game. They put their inside slot receiver on a flat route. They run their outside receiver on a slant, which opens up the inside guy. And D.J. just lets him know, hey, I'm going to be here for the rest of the fourth quarter, and I'm just going to let you know that. Horacek on the sideline. He really took a whack to the chest by Cunningham, trying to gather himself before he comes back into the ballgame. Third and nine for Iowa State. Bandauer fumble. And Iowa State falls on the ball. It was Greg Jones on the quarterback pressure and forcing the fumble. He gets credit for a sack and a forced fumble on that play, and Iowa State will have to punt. Greg Jones pretty much came off the right, the, uh, right side of, uh, actually the left side of Iowa State's offensive line came. Scott Free made a great uh, play on the quarterback, stripping the ball out of there. And luckily for Iowa State, they jumped on it. That's the fourth sack of the day for CU. Mark Harris back to punt. Low line drive. Rosga fields it and will return it. The penalty flags fly as Rosga is downed at the 42-yard line. We have 8.36 to go, fourth quarter. CU with a 41-28 lead. It's been a struggle, but CU so far prevailing. My guess is CU will probably keep it on the ground as much as they can for the remainder of this game. They'll put it up if they have to, but with eight minutes and 36 seconds left, they'll probably Hill run it block more than they'll pass it. Try to eat up the block. Ten yard penalty. First down. Let's see what this penalty is. It's against CU. A uh, uh, little block in the back there is something you can't really touch those guys. If you go in there and you even touch them in the back, those refs are going to call you for it. So Marcus Washington got his hands on the back of one of the Iowa State players, and the ref decided he was going to call it. Best thing he could do is just lift his arms up like I didn't do anything before he gets there, and uh, hope, hopefully the guy won't make the tackle. And, and hope the officials believe you. I didn't do it, ref. Phil Savoy, complete. Pick up of five, maybe six yards. Short passing, little three-step drop, little hitch pattern on the outside by Savoy. Savoy just using his big body to catch this ball. Great hands, good concentration, knowing he's going to get hit. And uh, Jason Brown makes a good tackle on him. Let's see you get six yards out of the play. That'll bring up second and four. Savoy is another one of the three receivers that CU has that can be really dangerous. He can take you deep too. I like him. I think he's got pro written all over him. Well, as big as he is and strong as he is and, and uh, the and hands that he has. And just a sophomore. Henry the ball carrier. This is Lyndon Henry. He bull rushes his way Great across midfield. Tackles. Puts the helmet down. And knocks Matt Straight down before Straight gets credit for the tackle. Lyndon Henry has had an outstanding game today. The offensive line for CU is really starting to play well. You see him cutting up in the hole. Squares his shoulders, gets back in the hole. Key to that play, CU's offensive line is starting to blow some holes in, in Iowa State's defensive line right now. Each team has all its timeouts left. Three. At one point, late third quarter, Iowa State led 28-27. But the Buffs have come roaring back. Hustler's pass intended for Carruth, overthrown. Go down to the field, Mark McIntosh. Thanks, guys. You're talking about Lyndon Henry, and ever since uh, Coach Ben Gregory, the running backs coach, uh, called him off the field and com complained about his lack of running straight up field, Lyndon Henry has been turning those shoulders upfield and had a heck of a ball game so far. I think this is the first game all year that Lyndon Henry's been over 100 yards. 112, if he, as you see on that graphic right there. His best day is a buff. That's a, that's a good point. You know, you're not going to gain any yards running sideways. They teach you to catch the ball and go right through your shadow, get right up the field, and, and that's what he's doing right now. On second and ten, Hessler intercepted by Straight. 
And he is finally down at his own 36-yard line. So every time you think CU is going to blow this one wide open, Iowa State makes some play to get back into it. Matt Strach really had a good game today, too. You know, he's been coming off the corner a lot, making tackles on CU's running backs. You see Hester getting a lot of time in the pocket. Probably didn't get as much on the ball as he'd like to. Straight does a good job picking that off. And you're going to see Ray Carruth come in here and try to strip the ball away from him, which is a good play by a wide receiver. See him put the hatchet on it right there and try to get it out. Matt Strait does a good job hanging on to it. He's an Iowa boy. Iowa State now with the ball at its own 36 on first down. Going deep is Bandauer looking for Horacek. But Rosga and Wilkins with good coverage, and that pass is incomplete. Rosga did a good job being disciplined, staying in the middle of the field, waiting to see what happened. Saw the post route coming down the middle. Does a good job, and I actually think that the ball bounced off of Rosga's helmet. Yep, right there, it bounced off his helmet. Great defense by Steve Rosga. Second and ten for Iowa State. 7.02 to go in the game. To the air, incomplete again. T.J. Cunningham doing a great job down there again, making sure that that pass doesn't get completed. That's that same route we were talking about earlier that they're trying to complete with the outside slant, the inside uh, receiver running a little flat pattern. Mike Horacek gets another shot from T.J. Cunningham on that little flat run. You're going to see a little bit better angle of it right here. Hello, I'm there again. I told you I was going to be there. <laughs> T.J., one of seven seniors on CU, already invited to play in the Hula Bowl in January. On third down, Iowa State on the afternoon, four for 13. Now they're facing third and 10. That pass nowhere near the intended receiver, Ed Williams. So Iowa State facing fourth down and probably a punting situation. Bender had a lot of time there to look over what was happening. Great coverage by CU's defensive back. He really didn't have anywhere to throw it. We're getting to the point now where Iowa State has to consider going for it on fourth down. They're down by 13. We've got less than seven minutes to go. But right now, head coach... Ed McCarney feels they have enough time to get it back at least twice to get the two scores they will need eventually. Mark Harris, the punter. Steve Rosga back to field it. And he calls for a fair catch. Plays it safe. And CU will start with the ball at its own 24. We'll take a break at Cyclone Stadium with CU leading by 13. Dear Midas, my wife's brake light had been flashing on, so we took the car to a repair shop. They failed to properly inspect the brakes and solve the problem. Then we took the car to Midas, requested a proper inspection, and told me... Well, your brake pads are worn, causing your master cylinder to use more brake fluid, in turn causing your light to go on. Then I got new pads and a guarantee. I should complain to that repair shop, but I wanted to congratulate you instead. Thank you. Dave Buchanan. Colorado, we take some things very seriously. All right, the blackjack here. I wondered if you were going to make it. You know how serious I take my blackjack pizza. Blackjack pizza. This is serious pizza at a ridiculously low price. Get a large two-topping pizza for only $6.99. Call Colorado's own Blackjack Pizza. If you buy a Cavalier today, we wouldn't be surprised if by the time it's scheduled for a tune-up, you've already got it paid off. If by the time it needs new rear shocks, you have your master's degree. If by the time it needs a transmission fluid change, your baby is in first grade. Or if by the time it needs a new muffler, we've elected two presidents. Any car can be easy to buy. Cavalier is easy to own. That's what makes it a genuine Chevrolet. Well, it's closer than a lot of people thought it would be, at least closer than Colorado fans thought it would be. After beating Iowa State 11 straight games, 
CU just holding on now, a 13 point lead. Iowa State always seems to give him problems. Here's a nice run by Marlon Barnes. And finally driven out of bounds at the Iowa State 14. Marlon Barnes, what a great run. Again, CU's offensive line, the right side of their offensive line right now is doing a great job. Chris Naoli and Melvin Thomas doing a great job of blocking. You see him cut down across the middle, making a great run. You know, Barnes really hasn't had a lot of snaps today, but he sure came off the, uh, the bench and put an exclamation point on that run. 54 yards on that carry. Why, that trio of sophomore running backs for CU having quite the afternoon. Lendon Henry with 111 yards. Herschel Troutman with 80. And you just saw what Marlon Barnes can do when given the chance. All three of those running backs are great, great running backs. They have a lot of talent, and plus they have a lot of years left to play. So all of them will get better by their senior year. Barnes got the call again, but Jason Putz didn't let him get very far. It's a big day for football in this state. Iowa is at home against Penn State, losing to Penn State 10 to 7. A lot of time to go in that ballgame, though. And early in its game in Nebraska, the Cornhuskers leading Kansas State 14 to 6. Second and seven for the Buffs. Trying to put the capper on this one. Barnes again pushes his way inside the 10. Let's go down to the field now and mark. Thank you, guys. You know what's really impressive about the fact that CU was able to recruit Troutman and Barnes and Henry is that Rashawn Salam was just a freshman when the CU coaching staff had to go out and convince all these kids as high school seniors to come to CU, but they were able to land three outstanding running backs, and their freshman year, Rashawn was a sophomore and playing with Lamont Warren, and then... Uh, Rashawn, of course, the last couple of years became the preeminent running back for them. But uh, Rashawn Salam, despite him being here, they were able to go out and recruit three very talented tailbacks. Another great thing about that is having talented running backs, that many talented running backs, if one of them was to go down with an injury, you know you can step up and the next guy can step in and just take over where the other guy was that got hurt. Marlon Barnes thrown for a two-yard loss by Shawn. There's another Iowa kid. He's really played a great game today. John really has done a great job. He's made a couple of tackles, a couple of key tackles. I think he had a quarterback sack earlier. You know, he's really done a good job today. Buffs looking at fourth down, fourth and six. And they've decided to kick the field goal. This will be a 27-yard attempt for Neil Voskaricia. His first field goal try on the day. He is 8 for 10 on the year so far. Roska gets the high snap down, and Voskaritian gets the three points. So that CU lead, now 16 points. Going to be difficult for Iowa State with just 4.14 to go. I'm a, the I'm new Mike Sh Excuse me. Let, I'll read this promo, <laughs> then you can make your point. How's that? Got to talk about the Mike Shanahan Show. It can be seen every Monday night at 6.30 right here on News 4. Join the coach and me for an in-depth look at tomorrow's game against Kansas City. And Mike will answer your questions about what happened in the game. Plus, he's going to use the Telestrator to illustrate why certain plays worked and why others didn't. It's the all-new Mike Shanahan Show, Mondays at 6.30, right here on News 4, the home of the Broncos. I'm sorry about that, Jeff. I had my uh, the producer in my ear saying, read that promo, read that promo. Well, I think that one thing you're going to take a look at is they'll probably put the ball in Troy Davis's hands as much as they can right now. Take a look at Dachshund on the sideline out of pads. You know that that injury is pretty, pretty serious if he's out of pads right now. See you kicking off with a 16-point lead. has been a day for running backs. Three CU backs have gone 69 yards or better, and Troy Davis from Iowa State is approaching the 200-yard mark. Iowa State got away with one there. They had a kind of a muffed kickoff. It could have gone CU's way, but luckily for them, they got the opportunity to jump on it. That was Kevin Wilson bobbling the 
kickoff. Iowa State has three timeouts left. And we'll probably use all three before this thing is over. Iowa State is definitely trapped down in their zone right now, so they need to get this ball out of here. Pretty bad field position for them right now. From the shotgun, Van Dower, the freshman. Pass incomplete. Tom Radke couldn't quite hold on. Radke's had a little, he's had a little trouble all day holding on, hasn't he? Yeah, Radke's had some balls thrown behind him. He's come open a lot, though. They keep running that crossing pattern in the middle to try to pick the linebackers. He came open on that one and just couldn't hang on to it. Ryan Black gave him a shot. From the shotgun formation, you'll see him looking around, going through his reads, and just thrown behind him a little bit, and Ryan Black just lets him know that he's going to be there. Those are tough passes, passes to catch when you've got to turn all the way back around to get them. And now he's done complete to Horacek. About a yard short of the first down. Well, I, they're, they're proving me wrong here. I thought that they'd put the ball in Troy Davis's hands a little bit more, but they're coming out throwing, and with only 3.50 left to go in the game, they probably need to do that. Another pass intended for Horacek. They're calling it a completion. Horacek, or uh, uh, Bandauer backs up, throws a good ball. Horacek just can't hang on to it. That's great coverage by Washington for CU. Anytime a DB can close like that on a receiver, it's really tough for the receiver to catch it. So you blitz and Bandauer gets rid of it quickly. This is Ed Williams. Brought down from behind by T.J. Cunningham. Three officials are throwing a flag on that play. Williams, good job. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, that might be a face mask. I think he grabbed him from his shirt collar from behind. So it'll be interesting to see what they've got going. A little bit better look at it. They're going to run a little crossing pattern here. And try to, that's like another little pick play. They're going to run that guy up the field to try to keep Cunningham away from it. Quick little hitter. He grabbed him by the face mask. That's what the call is going to be. And everybody saw that one. Every official reached for the pocket. We had a whole first bunch of flags on the field. Face mask. Just the defense. 15 yards. Automatic first down. They'll tack on another 15 yards for Iowa State on that play. You know, sooner or later, they're going to have to go deep, Jeff. With 3.30 to go, and they're down by two touchdowns. Well, right now they need a big play. They need something to happen that's going to give them a big gain so they can at least get down into field goal range. So, like you just said, you may see the ball get thrown deep. Unfortunately for Iowa State, they are throwing into the wind right now. More flags fly. We might get a motion penalty here against Iowa State. Somebody on that line move. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Still first down. Now that's exactly what it is. So send them back five yards. Sometimes when you get in these hurry up situations and you know you've got to put the ball in the end zone, some kinds of mistakes like that will happen. You'll get guys that are a little bit overexcited, a little bit anxious to get the ball off, and some mistakes like that will be made. First and 15. Over the middle complete. That's Radke. A fumble. CU picks it up. That's Marcus Washington. CU has the ball. I don't see any flags down, so that play is going to count. Iowa State running that little crossing pattern again with their tight ends to try to pick the linebackers. Radke comes open here, makes a good pass, good catch, gets up the field, and then gets stripped right there. Ball pops out. Washington picks it up on the run and gets going down the field. That's a great play. It was Maurice Enriquez coming up from behind to knock the ball loose from the wide receiver's grasp. Washington picks it up. And CU has the ball, and that should just about put a lock on this one, huh, Jeff? Yeah, that should probably do it. CU just needs to keep the ball on the ground, get a couple of first downs, 
you know, get down here. If they, could, if they can't put it in the end zone, kick a field goal, and uh, that pretty much will lock the game up from there. Essler's number is not great today, less than 50%. No touchdowns and two interceptions, but he and the offense got the job done on the ground. We're going to right now to run some more time off that clock. CU's offensive line has been outstanding today. They've put big holes in the defensive line of Iowa State. They've given their running backs the opportunity to make some big plays, and the running backs have made some big plays. So, you know, you really got to take your hat off to Terry Lewis and his preparation on getting those guys ready to play. Well, they're finally healthy. We talked about that earlier. Naoli, Stoltenberg, Thomas, they've all missed practice time with injuries, but now they're all back and ready and raring to go. Heath Irwin doing a good job today, and Kyle Smith filling in for Clint Moore. That's Marlon Barnes. Dives across the 10 yard line. Offensive line again. Great job. Just giving those running backs the opportunity to make runs. That's what the that's what you want your offensive line to do. You see the handoff over the right side here. After actually cuts back over the right side. Squares his shoulders like we've been talking about all day long. Key to the play again is their offensive line is just doing such a good job giving the running backs the opportunity to run. Going back to Clint Moore for a second, the usual starting left tackle for CU. Uh, we wish him well. The young man from Longmont has had some problems with insomnia, which has him uh, staying awake at nights, thinking football, and he starts thinking ne negatively and uh, causes some depression for him. That's Marlon Barnes going in for the score and a fight on the field. Yeah, we all, they all wish Clint Moore very well. Hope he's doing okay. You know, the, the, the CU coaching staff is really a good bunch of guys, and I know that they're all thinking as, as teammates that he's doing okay. Let's take another look at that touchdown. This put Marlon Barnes at 100 yards for the afternoon. You know, he's talking, again, offensive line. You can't say enough about the guys. You know, big holes, running backs are having the opportunity to get into the secondary and do what they can do, you know, what their, their God-given talents are, and that's run the football, and they're in the end zone. The officials discussing what to do about that fight that broke out in the end zone. We have a dead ball, partial foul against the offense after the touchdown. The touchdown is good. All right, so the touchdown stands, and CU will be penalized on the kickoff, I believe. Yeah, Chris Anderson looked like he just got into kind of a pushing match. Actually, it looked like he was just blocking the corner and pushed him in, and there, there started to be a little pushing match that happened, and usually... Uh, you're going to get called for something like that if you get into a pushing match. Uh, they're going to take 15 yards off right now on the extra point attempt. Yeah, you'll be able to see the pushing down here. Matt Strait and Chris Anderson kind of get into it. And, uh, you know, that's that's... That's really a judgment call by the ref. You know, that play's going on. They haven't blown the whistle yet, and they're, they're really not throwing punches. They're just kind of pushing each other around a little bit. The ball is set at the 18-yard line, and CU will go for the two points. Over the middle, incomplete. Broken up by Mike Linkavich. That's a great play by Linkavich, and the crowd here is not too happy that CU was trying to go for two points. Why do you think Rick did that? Just to try something to see, you know, what's working and what's not working as far as two-point conversions go. They know that they had 15 yards to go into the end zone. Uh, kicking it, you know, he could have kicked it, but he just decided he wanted to try for the two points. It would have been a 28-yard extra point attempt. 50 to 28, CU leads with 2.15 to go. There's some very unhappy folks in the stadium yes, right now. Yes, they are. <laughs> Somebody just yelled out, I guess we're going to have to cheer for Nebraska next week. Tell you what, there's some fired up people on that CU sideline, including the head coach, Rick Neuheiser. I wonder what that's all about. 
Yeah, I think he just wants these guys to be organized. He knows he's got the game won, but he wants his players to be disciplined and go out and play the rest of the game until the, the uh, last horn sounds. And they want to remain focused. They've gotten their confidence back, but he does not want them to be, you know, overconfident and go out and make a mistake this late in the game. Well, the kids on the CU sideline are egging on the crowd now. Telling them to look at the scoreboard. 50 to 28, the Buffs lead. Things have gotten a little ugly here in the last three minutes. It's getting a little ugly. <laughs> Leslie kicking off. Kevin Wilson can't hold on, and Jahi Arnold picks up the fumble. And he gets it up to his own 33. See Marlon Barnes here lined up, getting ready to, this is the touchdown run, gets up in there, gets to the line quickly, makes a good cut. He really, I mean, you could have really driven a car through that hole. He did a great job getting in the end zone, and uh, CU's offense seems to be back on track again. Well, what's left of the crowd is, is booing, and booing fairly loudly. Marlon Barnes has gone over, well, he has at 100 yards today. Lendon Henry has 111 yards for CU. Troutman, the starter, lagging behind with only 80 yards rushing. That's three pretty solid running backs, I would say. Pass from Van Dauer incomplete. Good pressure again by CU's defensive line. Great pressure. It was Nick Ziegler and Stacy Patterson. You know, you've got people in your face all day long as a quarterback. That's tough. You know, you don't really have any time to throw, and, and uh, it's tough to pick out your receiver. So. The uh, defensive line for CU has really played well today. There's some pretty good running back numbers. Troy Davis raises his weekly average with 203 today. He's a handsome. Bandauer looking long. As his man. That's it. Ed Williams deep into CU territory. Great adjustment by Ed Williams on that ball. See, the ball gets thrown up. T.J. Cunningham has great coverage on him. See a little bit better angle of it here. This pass good for 33 yards. Good job by the offensive line. He throws it under pressure, actually. Gets down there. T.J. has good position, just doesn't turn around for the ball. Ed does a great job turning around and catching that ball. Bandauer escapes the sack and picks up five yards. Now, now we have people yelling timeout. They're going to cheer for Nebraska, and they're yelling timeout. I think they want the Cyclones to put at least one more score on the board. 1.30 to go. The Cyclones, no shot at winning this game. But they want to make a point. In fact, they want to make six points. <laughs> Good coverage again by T.J. Cunningham down that right side. CU with 324 yards on the ground alone. 498 yards on the day altogether. That's a great offensive day. You know, they talked earlier about regaining their confidence on offense and defense, and I really think that CU and uh, Rick have, have done that. They've done a great job getting their confidence back and feeling confident going into Nebraska. You hear the cheer now? Overrated. I think CU shouldn't be ranked as high as they are. There's a whole bunch of animosity going on right now between the CU players and the Iowa State fans. That'll bring up fourth down for Iowa State. Minute 22 to go. CU did come in ranked number nine in the country. Believe it or not, there are four Big 8 teams ranked in the top ten. Four. Now, and then you add the, the, Oklahoma. the next the next four when they go to the Big 12, and you got some great teams in that, that area with A&M and Texas. And On fourth down, Bandauer complete. DiBiase, the tight end, close to the first down. Kenny Wilkins came up and made a great stop on that, you know, hitting those big tight ends. That's tough, and he came up and made a great stop. You see Van Dauer dropping back, getting ready to hit his tight end.
good catch, and Kenny Wilkins does a great job making that tackle. DiBiase did pick up the first down. That pass incomplete, again intended for Ed Williams. And again, T.J. Cunningham, the coverage. T.J. Cunningham's really had a good game today. He's done well in his coverage. He got beat earlier on the one down the sideline. That was just he didn't take a look back and see where the ball was, and Ed Williams made a good adjustment on it. But he's really had a good game today. He's made a lot of good tackles and uh, has covered Ed Williams really well. you got to give that kid a lot of credit. Out of Aurora, Overland High School, he's played everywhere at CU. He's played running back, wide receiver. He's returned kicks. He plays special teams. Looks like he's found a home at defensive back, though. He's really done a great job. He can even play safety for you. You know, right now he's at corner, but he can play safety, both safety, strong and free safety. So he's a real versatile type guy. Nick Ziegler with his second sack of the afternoon. The freshman red shirt out of Huntington Beach, California. Nick Iowa Ziegler. State is called a timeout. Nick Ziegler's really done a good job today getting in there and and making some plays, getting the quarterback out of the pocket. Be with us on Saturday, November 4th, when the Buffs return to News 4 and take on Oklahoma State. That's live from Stillwater. That game will be seen in the Denver area on Channel 20, KTVD. We'll have all the action from Stillwater starting at noon on Saturday, November 4th, only on News 4, the home of the CU Buffs. 